Come on now, people. I've been telling you for almost two years now, you need to have a GNR TV. And now, sports are back. Football is back. Now is the perfect time for you to get this if you don't have it already. And if you look on over here, as I've been telling you before, you get all these amazing channels, every single one of them, for $20 a month for two devices. And if you look on up over here, it's written. It's written everything you get with GNR TV. If you want four devices, $40. And there's some cool extras right here. GNR TV, streaming done right. If you don't have it, get it. What more can I say? What more can I say? It's time to cut the damn cord, stop being ripped off by the dish and cable, and get this lovely thing we call GNR TV. Streaming done right. Let's get slicing and dicing with Sir Sturdy Horror fans. On this podcast, you will hear me and a guest do some movie reviews, random funny horror chats, and whatever else comes to mind. So tune in, kick back, relax, and always remember, I'll see you in your nightmares. Well, this Jason's mask. How's it going, ladies and gentlemen? It's another exciting episode of Horror with Search 30. Today, I'm going to let all my guests introduce themselves and let you know where they're from. As you guys should know, I'm from upstate New York. So this is very interesting. And go ahead. Take it away. Hey, I'm David Black. I'm from Melbourne, Australia. And I make films. And the people that I have as my slaves to make those films for me are on this very show tonight. (laughs) 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 Hi, everybody. Nice to meet you all. (laughs) Oh, my gosh. You've all gone shy all of a sudden. (laughs) Now you've got to say who you are. (laughs) Oh, all right. G'day everybody, I'm Cookie. Um, I work with Dave on pretty much everything he's made, I think, so far. Um, <laughs> either acting or lighting or somewhere in between. I think I've done sound even at one stage. Nice. More will be revealed. Next. <laughs> Alrighty. I'm Anastasia Seeker Lucas and that's my name. Um, but that's not my game. My game is acting and, and sometimes editing. And I've been working with David on some of his films, small, not as long as Cookie, but I've, I'm I'm in the um, the vault in some of the films, and it's always fun, it's always incredible, and there's always a lot of laughter, and that's me. Hi, I'm Vixie. Vixie is short for Victoria, which I was originally from Victoria, Melbourne, but um, I'm currently in Sydney at the moment. And I am an actress as well as I do various uh, crew work behind the scenes. Uh, And I have been on quite a few of Dave's projects, uh, which I thoroughly enjoy. I absolutely love the crew. Um, And of course the cast and I uh, I've got a few other projects because I'm still currently studying film with SAE but uh, yeah that's that's everything about me <laughs> nice nice so really quick what is um what got you guys into horror and we'll go in the same order what, like what's the first all right so what got you into horror and then if you remember what's the first movie that scared you for me as far as what got me into it, I'll have to say my older brother and my older cousins. I was the youngest one at the time, and I would follow them around. You want to do everything the older people are doing, because I guess the older kids are cool. And horror was one thing that they would do just about every single weekend, just rent horror movies from whoever's you know, horror house we're at. And they let me watch them with them. The rule was don't wake up mom or don't wake up on so-and-so because you're going to get us all spankings. You're going to get us all in trouble because we let you watch this movie with, the, you know, with us. So I did not – I never woke them up. And the first movie I remember that scared me is Creep Show Part Two, the hitchhiker scene. I have no idea why that story scared the hell out of me because it's hilarious now. But I know as a kid, you know, your mind plays tricks on you and all that, and your imagination is <clears throat> wild. But I remember, like, 
I had to use the bathroom and I was scared to go alone. So I had asked one of them to walk me to the bathroom and like wait out, wait outside the bathroom until I was done. And then, but I would always go back and watch more and more horror. That's that's some that's the one that really stands out to me. I know there was a bunch more that probably scared me as a kid. That's one that I just for some reason that one sticks with me. That's one I really remember. And I started watching it. I think between like I said between the ages of five years old and seven years old. And now I'm going to be 35 in November. And I'm still watching these movies and still love them. Probably even more so now because as you can see, I made a podcast for it. And yeah, so that's what got me started. What about you, Dave? Well, I was about the same age, um, somewhere between five and seven, so I'll say six. And uh, we had a hosted horror show called Deadly Earnest. I can barely remember it now because I was a little kid. And we also had um, the TV would go 24 hours on Friday the 13th. Normally, the TV used to turn off at uh, 10 o'clock or 11 o'clock at night, mm -hmm. and people would actually stand to attention in their lounge room when Epilogue would come on with God Save the Queen. But on Friday the 13th, and I think it was Channel 10, it was horror movies all the way through right till the TV would normally have started up again. And they'd start with the old, um, the old universal ones. So the, when it comes to what scared me first, it would have been that because at six years old, I probably fell asleep mm -hmm. before the Hammer House of Horror stuff came on because mm -hmm. it progressively got heavier and heavier and heavier as the night went on. Although if I actually have to say, when I really recall being scared first, it was Jaws. Mm -hmm. And just like that toilet story of yours, I was afraid to go for a wee because I thought a shark would come up through the toilet and bite my todger <laughs> off. <laughs> Oh, wow, that's awesome. That's awesome. Ah, good stuff. How about you, Cookie? Yeah, um, I suppose it's a bit later into getting into horror. Um, the stuff that used to scare me originally was the, um, you know, the classic series of Doctor Who. Um, you know, episodes like The Seeds of Doom, etc. Um, I mean, the early Doctor Who was seriously bloody scary. Um, so yeah, that was that was probably my early horror, but the film that absolutely scared the pants off me, like seriously taught me how to be afraid, was Alien. Um, you know, and I mean, even now you you, know, you play you can play the Alien game, um, and it, that same level of fear that I had when I was nine when I saw it is there now. You know, I'm several years later down the track, and it's like yeah, that's seriously seriously scary it's just a pity the franchise has sort of gone to water a heck of a lot because people have run out of ideas and all that sort of thing but yeah um the original alien film was de is definitely scary you know it, it definitely tortured you to be af you know, afraid of the shadows and afraid of things you, you can't see or very little that you can't see etc and of course you know sadly as we talk about alien our poor old ian holm has passed away who played the android um ash from Alien, but yeah, so yeah, that, that was my, that's my early horror and that's, that's the film that still scares me to some degree, although it also carrying on to where we go sort of going on a bit further is, you know, it also taught me more interest in lighting and stuff like that because the lighting is absolutely on point. Mm -hmm. um, it's absolutely fantastic. So yeah, there's a bit of a tie in there. So yeah, that, that's my horror. Nice. Uh, okay, so a bit of a confession. Um, I am terrified of horror movies, and so I really, really didn't like watching horror movies at all. So my first thing that scared the bejesus out of me was actually The Wicked Witch of the West from The, Wicked, from the Wizard of Oz. <laughs> 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 yeah. Uh, but, um, yeah, I know it's embarrassing. Uh, just jeez, her face just like, it's like, oh, damn, and it's like, Surprise. It's like, oh, uh, uh, but in terms of horror, maybe, um, oh God, mm. probably Jaws. I think Jaws was one of the first ones that I saw and I did not like going swimming in general, <laughs> but especially after that, not night at all. <laughs> nope. Uh, you know, so I still have, I, I still get the, um, the Lee motif when I'm in the deep end of swimming pools mm. and it's broad daylight. So it, it just, no. <laughs> Jaws is the one for me. Uh, 
Yep. Um, well, I'm a bit more of a sci-fi person. Um, I mean, there's a lot of crossover with sci-fi and horror. I would say the first one that I saw that absolutely blew my mind and is my number one favorite movie of all time ever, and that's Terminator. I absolutely love Terminator. Um, and I am all around about like the robots and the aliens and the zombies. I love those things. Um, and I certainly, I, I actually, I, again, in the eighties, there was like a lot of stuff that was just like, they just have tons of blood. Like, <laughs> I just, I just love that really, um, stylistic and, um, and just, over the top, mm. just spraying of blood. So stuff like Kill Bill, where, where they have the fight scene and there's just blood spraying everywhere. Mm. I love that stuff. Um, but really what got me really into horror was, um, was the people. Like, um, my best friend is an absolute horror fanatic. Um, she runs a few of the, she's like the moderator for quite a few um, Facebook pages. Um, and of course, David, making the films with David and um, just working on the horror film. I like, I love being in horror films. Like I'd say even more than watching them. So um, yeah, I just had such a great experience. Um, more behind the scenes than watching them. But of course I do enjoy watching the movies as well. Um, and I like, um, I even like those really old psychological thrillers like Rope or, um, and I love Jaws. I love sharks. Like sharks are awesome. Like I even love Sharknado, even though, I, I mean, I know it was just, it was so bad that it was good. <laughs> Cause like, and everything, it was like, oh, I know what's going to, yep, they're totally going to do it. Yep. That's so stupid, but they're going to do it. <laughs> and it's so funny when it happens. <laughs> so yeah. Um. Yeah, so just love the fun silliness, and um, I think that's uh, that is something about horror movies. Like, it's more that you can sort of like when you see someone else experiencing those horror things, and in your head you'll be like, "Oh no, don't don't go to an out of it. That's that's stupid, right?" But like, there's this sort of sense that like. Um, you know, you'd be more prepared in those situations and that you'd sort of, like... I, fi I find it empowering to, like, watch a lot of horror movies that way because I would be thinking, like, ooh, I would totally do this this, this totally other way. <laughs> I like what you said about the shark movies because I'm the same way. There's just... I'm not a fan of the, the Sharknados. I do want to eventually finish them. I, I heard there's one where they go to space, but I feel like I need to see that one. <laughs> <laughs> but I, there's so many shitty shark movies that I watch. I'm just like, this movie is so terrible. But I have, I just feel like I have horror in general. But I'm just, because you mentioned sharks, I'm just like, like, I'll give you two examples. There's one called Jurassic Shark. And there's another <laughs> one called uh, Piranha Shark. And just by the title alone, I was like, these things, in my head, I'm like, these movies are going to be so freaking awesome. And then when you see it and you see the bad CGI in them, I'm just like, oh, my God. But I finished, <laughs> I finished them both because I'm like, I, you know, you, I had to finish. I'm like, I started it. I'm like a shark, horror shark movie fanatic for some reason. It's, it's, uh, it's uh, horror, aquatic horror. Like, I love the Piranha, the Piranha movie. And... I don't know what it is. I'm ter like in real life, I'm scared. I won't go in the ocean. I'm not messing with that. I won't swim with sharks. If I want to see a shark, I'll either watch it on TV, YouTube, a movie, or I'll go to an aquarium even. But as far as like, hey, you know, come in the ocean, jump in the water, you can just swim with them. You can grab. No, I'm good. No, no, thank you. I see <laughs> frogs. I know what can happen. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, I was so stay in a swimming pool. Like, um, Every time I've gone to the beach, like some sort of sea creature has tried to attack me, and I was just like, <laughs> I've had like octo <clears throat> like the blue ring octopuses like swim past me, and I, I've actually had like it was it was a smallish shark, but it was a shark, and it was just like circling around my legs, and I was just like, gosh, oh gosh, and then eventually swims away. I was just like, okay. <laughs> so oh, one of yeah. one of the first. Um, 
movies that had a scary scene that got me was Barry McKenzie Holds His Own. I don't know if any of you have heard of it, but it's an Aussie Ocker Yob one with a vampire oh, yes. called Count Plasma. And there's that scene where they're watching the um, home movies and everybody comes screaming out of the beach and there's blood everywhere. And Dame Edna is saying, oh, those nasty sea wasps. And I remember watching it. And when you watch it as an adult, it looks like crap. But as a kid, seeing 30 people all come out of the beach screaming, going, ah, with blood everywhere, it just knocked me. That was 1973. And I was way too young to go see that movie. And they just let us <laughs> kids go in. <laughs> they didn't care. I mean, I must have been eight years old or something. And they didn't care that they're letting in a bunch of eight to ten year olds into an R rated film. I mean, they were di they were different times. <laughs> oh yeah. I, I think it's uh, I think it's interesting that like I mean Jaws is a fantastic film and um, even though it was like about sharks and mm. I think um, one of the things that people were saying about it was that it was good because of how little you actually saw the shark mm. because it was like it was mm. like lurking that's... sneakily in the background and that's what kind of made it like viable that like a lot of the, um, the the people in the town were just like not believing that it was there and that like that sort of just um, sort of like shadowy like like foreshadowing of it happening and um and then of course there's like these those scenes where you see like you're just the children innocently playing in the water and it, even the mom's like oh, oh yeah that's fine and then um when the father comes along and tells her like oh no there was somebody like killed by them she's just like oh my god get out of the water <laughs> like you know she really like you, you can you can feel like that mother's protectiveness um just kick in and, and she's attention. like oh gotta protect your children um and I think that's that was that was like um, that is something that like I really hook into that I really love about um, both horror movies as well as um, sci-fi's like Terminator is like um, that that there is always that sense that when someone is in danger, there's also like either a mother figure or father figure or a family member or friend that like really sells it because they're so concerned about that character that's in danger. Um, and that's, um, I, that's, that's something that I hook into more than like the like actual monster, so, so to speak. I saw a different version to you. <laughs> <laughs> I, I only just uh, read about it the other day that there's um, this whole cut scene and I'm looking at this um, story and going, but that's the opening scene. I saw it. I don't know. What, did everybody else see a Jaws that starts with an opening scene of a woman that's in the ocean and you see the shark yeah. actually come up and rip her to shreds? Um, well, you don't I... see it rip to shreds, but she sort of flushes about in the water and goes around. It's quite hilarious, actually. But, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, that's, that's, that's <laughs> the original one. And you because see, um, a, yeah, the one I um, saw was just right in your face and you saw lots of blood. You saw the kid on a, a yellow lilo. Yeah, being ripped yeah, yeah, to I remember shreds. that one, yeah. Yeah, the it version. It was like a fountain. It was just a fountain. Yeah, yeah, the one I saw was just blood curdling, whereas where you mentioned really? Alien, Cookie, and Alien, uh, you could not see the Alien much in that first no. one. Um, no, no, not at all. I got... There is so much there that um, I found it frustrating that you could not quite see, you couldn't quite hear, and then it's all happening. I think you haven't played the Alien game, have you? No, I haven't. <laughs> it's, it's, Dave, give it, a, give it a try, man. It'll freak seven colours of shit out of you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we need to make a film that uh, gets up and gory like that. Yeah, we can do that. I'm up for that. I oh, think um, uh, you can get, get into an escape room. Like some somebody act, has actually set up like an escape room that's um, that's alien themed. Oh, really? And, That'd be awesome. Yeah. That'd so, like, sick. and they actually do have like actors like in the ceilings and stuff, like um, pushing like the walls and things and shaking everything. So, like, you really get the sense of like <laughs> stuff moving around. That mm. would be cool. <laughs> Oh, Anastasia. The, I would go, but I would just be in the centre of the room at all times and just like, <laughs> why do you be smart and not die? Actually, 
I would not want you to go because you'd scream and I've heard your scream. <laughs> <laughs> oh, from yeah, Dark Knight of the Zomboogies. Yes. That yes. scream is the ultimate. <laughs> so that's yeah. the first I did with uh, Vixie. Mm -hmm. That's the first mm -hmm. movie we all did oh. together, Dark yeah, Knight yeah, of the exactly. Zomboogies. Well, yeah. Because <laughs> we were all acting in it, all of us. <laughs> yeah. God, well, that was, most of us were what? acting. <laughs> yeah. How many... <laughs> How many years ago yeah, was it? Yeah, I just, I just did what I usually do, and I went straight for the heart. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I can't. Oh, what that year was, was that? 2016? Could be. Uh, because... No, January uh, 2017. Oh, there yeah. you go. Yeah. Now, I think, like, I'd been making music videos before that, but I'd never done a film before. I think that was my first short movie that um, I ever directed. Of course, I had a lot of help. Dia uh, Taylor uh, was really the, uh, the main director on that, and we worked together. But that's when we all got together, and 30 films mm. later, we're all together on this show. It's the first podcast hey. we've all been together on. <laughs> yeah, wow. <laughs> <laughs> And to celebrate your birthday. Yeah. 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 <laughs> this is actually, as far as I know, this is like the first birthday on the podcast. So happy birthday to David. Hey, there we go. Nice. As far as, I, unless, unless people didn't just, you know, they, were just, they didn't say it was their birthday. If they didn't say it, then I don't know. But as far as I know, this is the first birthday where we're actually recording. So that's, that's kind of cool. I just there went with the date that we got given because every, everybody here has been busy. Um, Anastasia's just brought out a movie, Sinister <laughs> Symbiosis. <laughs> Vixie you, just uh, brought and out then. a movie. Sorry, Cookie. Yeah. Oh, Cookie's in that, and he's also in the one that Vixie's in, uh, yes. the wizard film, Quest of Questions. <laughs> Quest <Yes>. of Questions. <laughs> so, yeah, We're the last one. Test. And I think the film before that, <laughs> Is Hamlet for the Fireys that you're the star yes. of, Glenn? Cookie. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> oh, sorry, Cookie. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> I'm starting to try to down can't stop. Cookie. Only the privileged ones are allowed to use the name Glenn. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> Although the silly thing is when you look at the helmet there, that it actually has got Cook written on it, and that was used in Hamlet for the Fireys, and here I am forgetting. <laughs> I can't forget my lines on the, in the, on the sets too, <clears throat> which, of course, you know. nobody else ever does, do they? <laughs> oh, no, I, 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 just, I just... We just make it up as we go along, you know. <laughs> Improvisation! I'm actually making one because I couldn't remember my lines that I, we were just like, okay, we're just going to record the voice lines separately and then, like... That's flag and fluff. Yes, flag and fluff. <laughs> Is that, so is that funny. out yet? <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. 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 Oh. So to watch it, do we just go to the Davis Dar channel on YouTube? Yeah, yeah. I put that up. Uh, that one came out during the lockdown. During the lockdown, I've had uh, four new movies come out because Blag and Fluff was sitting there in editing for a year. I think mm. Sinister Symbiosis was sitting in... The, in editing for a year um the only one that, uh, just the last one we did before lockdown was yours glenn um cookie yours was the last one you was see it, was it the last one before lockdown yeah Hamlet australia was, was burning down and we wanted to do yeah. something yeah, yeah, it, to it, raise it awareness yeah that's right so, yeah. so we went from the bushfires to um zombie apocalypse yeah <laughs> <laughs> Oh, it's going to be a year of wonders for every year. God, oh, look, I'm we're only halfway through the year. What do you think the regular half, second half of this year is going to do? I don't want to know. I've got four subjects online. I just did five subjects online. I just want to get through the rest of this year and graduate. <laughs> my other degree. Well, I'm, 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 my other I'm degree. kind of hoping for a meteorite impact. A meteorite impact would be great. I mean, that would, that would, that would save, you know, the good people with the planet. <laughs> no, oh, I don't yeah, want YouTube you, you to go down. down. Because if, if there's a meteorite impact and YouTube goes down, the whole channel goes down. Oh, that would be a shame. Yeah. Besides, be the world, according to the Bible, the world's been destroyed by flood once and God made a promise never to do that again, which is why we've got a rainbow. That's God's promise. means That's the world true. next gets destroyed by fire, according to the Polycon, which isn't promise. biblical at all. 
But the Polychronicon has that the world will be destroyed by fire next. Well, a good portion of Australia's burnt, so... Yeah, yeah Australia, somebody. Australia's got... We've got... Um, we've all prepared. We know what's, what's going to go down. <laughs> and it's got to say, it's pretty weird, though, when I drove up and saw my parents and it was, you know, you drive for six hours and for six hours, everything is burnt. <laughs> it's weird. It's very, very weird. Oh, that's crazy. That's very damn. That's nuts. Yeah. You know, but you, you can't imagine it. You, know, you see it on the news. You don't get a, a real, I mean, you know it's bad, but when you actually see it for real, mm -hmm. um, and like I say, you're driving at 100 kilometres an hour for six hours, you know, and it's all burnt. Well, that's a large, large area. So, yeah. Yeah. So, no, okay, we've done the burning. Thing. What's next, Dave? Well, <laughs> well <laughs> there's also the 10 plagues of Pharaoh. <laughs> oh, God. Okay. Well, I mean, technically, one's gone round now. In well, the first, wave. the first one was blood. The next one was was frogs. I actually know all of the uh, plagues in Hebrew. I don't know them in English, and it takes me a few minutes to try to translate the Hebrew to English because I don't speak Hebrew very well. <laughs> I speak it well enough that if I went to Israel, I could order a falafel. But <laughs> I can also, I can also order a falafel in Arabic too. That's useful, That's though, because waffles are great. <laughs> yeah, waffles I, think are it's great. Important. I think it's important to learn all of the languages in the world to know how to say hello, goodbye, where's the toilet, and I want a falafel, please. <laughs> but what if you're in Japan? Yeah, <laughs> they have falafel in Japan. <laughs> Do they? Am I? Maybe, maybe a sushi sometimes. roll or something. They would probably have a, like... A fusion falafel sushi. <laughs> there, there'll be Japanese. Well, the Japanese make these pancakes onigori or what are they called? Oh, yeah, they're great. Oh, I love they, are, they are the bomb, yes. Well, one of the uh, religious foods for Jews is actually pancakes. It's for um, oh, one of the latkes. festivals. Latkes. Latkes, yeah. I have fallen in love with the Japanese ones and think that they're just as good as latkes. So, I mean, if the Japanese have got latkes, they'll have falafel. That's true. Yep. That's true. Oh, damn. I'm right, sold. Uh, my favourite's actually pizza. <laughs> 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 Deep pan pizza. That is mm. my favourite. The one that's got all of that extra cheese because the pan is really thick. What's everybody's mm -hmm. food when they're watching... A movie in general. I guess mine for horror movies would be Wings and Pizza and my main reason besides the fact that they're both good is it's one of those things you don't have to really look down too much to eat. You just kind of grab it and keep watching TV or watching a movie. Mm. Unlike like a pasta or something because you have to you know, if you're eating spaghetti you, know, you gotta kind of watch what you're doing. But pizza you can literally just kind of glance at it for a second and just eat. Well, it all depends where you where you watch your movie, I suppose. I mean, I, I'm a bit of a fan of going to the cinema because it's got a really nice smell, you know, mm. probably stale popcorn, I suppose. So <laughs> typically I, I, base, I base a good movie on how many Maltesers I eat. So if I go in and I buy a bag of Maltesers, um, I don't know what if you guys have those over in the States. But um, um, but you go and watch a movie, and if I've still got most of a bag of Maltesers, you know it's been a, a really fucking good movie because you haven't eaten the Maltesers. But if you've finished the Maltesers before the first act is over, well, yeah, you know it's kind of boring and it sucks and all that sort of thing. You're not into it, so that's my that's my gauge of how good a movie is. What is that? Oh, a Maltese. Well, they're Maltese round. Are, they're like yeah, they're chocolate balls. Like, yeah, they're like little malt balls with chocolate on the outside. They're really yummy. Oh, okay, okay, okay. They had to change from Jaffas to Maltesers because um, once you got uh, carpet in the cinemas, you couldn't roll your Jaffas down the aisle. Mm, mm. Aww. But when they get all hairy, if the cinema floor was were clean. Oh, nobody talked about eating them. Now, in the old oh. days, like the, the, <laughs> in the old days, like in the nineteen fifties, you'd get uh, like I wasn't there, but I got told about it because you had wooden floors. They made a noise if somebody opened up the Jaffa box, uh. and they went and bounced yeah, like down the wooden wooden uh, yes. floor. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's so waste, waste a good Jaffa's though. 
I'll tell you what's probably coming to Australia. It's probably not <laughs> used for uh, America, but it's the actual pub cinema, like the Alamo Draft House. So you go into what looks like a cinema, but what's in front of you is actually like a little table. And you order, oh. and they bring hamburgers and beer and everything to you. You watch oh. a movie, and you what you're eating in front of the movie is your hamburger, your chips, your fries, or a steak or whatever. For me, it'd all be mm. vegetarian. And then mm. in between the movies, out comes a guy and he does a chook raffle. He says, does anyone have this particular ticket? And they have, and you win lots of movie memorabilia and prizes. Okay. And uh, yeah, so I mean, you've got less people in the cinema because you're sitting at a table, but you get to have a proper meal. Like a pub meal. Mm. We're about to lose a lot of cinemas when this um, whole thing is over. And I think um, that that will probably be the trend that takes off here. I can, I can we'll see. always have the Asta. Mm. I hope so. Um, I, in, one of my friends has been quite vocal about how much he's missed going to the cinemas um, because of... And, like, yeah, people... I think people would be, like, eager to go back to the cinemas, like, since they have been in lockdown for so long. Yeah, That's I, what um, happened last time. Uh, believe it or not, <laughs> when World War I finished and the whole um, pandemic finished, there was a rush on cinemas and going out and everything. Although I don't know what sort of cinemas they had then. I think they were like Nickelodeons, but, you know, <laughs> I read that there was a rush. People... Rushed into everything. The same will happen. Yeah, they again. did. You remember? Yeah, I, I kind of agree. I think that'll happen for sure. You know, um, whatever the next movement in technology will be, we'll certainly be moving into it big time. You know, and even even with lockdown, I know there's a lot more people online and a lot more people broadcasting and doing things like that. So, yeah, I think the next big thing's coming. But I think there's always going to be the need for the big screen. You know, yeah. even even home theatre. You know, where I mean, I've got a projector here at home, but um, it still doesn't, even though it's a nice big screen, it still doesn't top actually going to the movies mm. and seeing it in an actual theatre, you know. Um, yeah. And, you know, I mentioned the Asta before, and the Asta's, it's 100 years old, but it's fantastic, you know. Um, and it's, the, it's, Asta's, yeah. the Asta still fits uh, 2,000 uh, people. Yeah. So they, they're able to open up uh, with the current restrictions and be able to socially distance and fit 400 in like your other cinemas. So they're going to be yeah. fine. Yeah, the, pal love them. the palace around the corner fits 2,500. So if you need for the staff um, a cinema with 400 people, both of those will be fine. So they were mm. like the ones that were going to go by the uh, wayside like the dinosaurs. They'll survive. Mm. But uh, a 60-seat cinema has got problems because they can't pay the staff if only 15 people are allowed in. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Yeah. yeah. Um, <clears throat> I, was, I went to the Lunar Drive-In, which is in Cranbourne, I think, for the first oh, time nice. on, the, on the 23rd because uh, I went to see the movie with um, my boyfriend and we, because I, I got fooled because the advertisements were running, I could see them running in the car, like from the car park. And I was like, oh, maybe they're open. They weren't. <laughs> so we drove to the little drive in. And so we went and got our, um, we went and got like chips and, and burgers. And then I got some chocolate. And then we went and drank, we just got drinks and we went and sat in the car. And it was incredible because I'd been to movies in the park where my mum would take me and we'd see, like, they'd set up this massive screen in, in a park and everyone would come with bean bags and be like a barbecue and you could buy hot sausages and drinks. And it, it would be like, it was, it was more for like kids' movies because it was like a, like a family event. So there was like, um, like all, the, all the popular kids' movies and stuff like that. But it was it was really different going from that to the lunar drive and even before then we once saw a movie in a pool like we, we were at a pool with my with my mum again and they had a screen set up at the far end of the swimming pool so everyone's at the shallow end and so that was really interesting again but definitely um, in terms of cinemas like I remember seeing the Rocky Horror Picture Show with a live um, 
reenactment for the very first time. So, of course, I had to be, I was one of the uh, Rocky Horror <laughs> Pitch Show versions, so I had to go up and we had to make orgasm noises. <laughs> And Andy won. River won. Good rise. And then he went and sat down. Oh, and... I've done that too. Well, uh, yeah, the uh, was part of the shadow cast, and like, yeah, we would yeah. Uh, we would like yell out some of the things, and and um and yeah, make the audience noise. That was so funny. It was like it was just just a great experience to like to actually participate in watching the movie. Um, and it being completely accepted to, like, jump up and down and cheer and stuff in an actual cinema. <laughs> yeah, and be like, Brad, you're oh. an asshole. Yeah. It is, yeah, it it is so great good. to see drive-ins coming back. Oh, yeah, yeah totally. It, because it's literally social distancing because yes. you're in your car. Oh, <laughs> your the drive-in experience. I, I, I lived through that. Um, nowadays... I think they'll still have the technology that they had when the last drive-ins were dying, where you actually just tune in on FM radio. Mm, but when yeah, I started yep. going, they had these speakers that you put on the window. Oh, yes. Yep. Yeah, I remember and those. And people would forget, and they go to drive off and wreck their windows. Yes. yes. The other thing is, the way the, like, we were little kids, and the way the um, drive-ins were was that they're like this it's not smooth ground so that each car is actually just slightly up on an angle and we'd go running for the car park and always fall over and end up with the worst <laughs> gravel rashes because we weren't um. running on flat ground and we were little kids and too stupid to know yeah and then the second yeah. bit the drive-ins were famous for b-grade movies that's where mm -hmm. they put the uh, b-grade porn and the b-grade horror so <laughs> At eight years old, we would um, sit, like, drive-ins were on main roads because they were mainstream back then. So you'd be standing out there and you, as a little kid, be watching porno movies. I saw Flash, uh, Flesh Gordon. Um, <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> and That's all of a the, great film. Um, that sounds kind of it really is. <laughs> I'd be about it's, eight years old. It's and watching really good. <laughs> and the case of the Smiling Stiffs. Oh, wow. <laughs> to me, that's what that's porn's insane. all about. We saw the Decameron. We <laughs> saw, um, I mean, all of those porn ones, I think they're by today's standard soft core and oh, you just watch them. So um, mild. Oh, very mild. But And they're also funny. But as when I was a kid, those were R-rated porn and we'd be standing in the street watching them. Flesh Gordon was actually my first porn film I ever saw, actually. And I managed to hire it out. It was in the mainstream videos, believe it or not, when I finally oh. got to see it again. This is, <laughs> that's that how mild so it mild. really is. <laughs> and and, it came, and like, we watched it, and I said, man, you've got to check this out. I saw this when I was a kid, and we're sitting around watching this thing, and it's as funny. as It's so funny. It's not, oh, there's a bit of nudity, but, I mean, geez, what's not got nudity in it these days? But um, yeah. but it's, it's the jokes and the gags and stuff, even the, even the animation and things and the effects were actually not too bad considering but it's, it's really fucking funny, you know. It's really worth a watch um, just for the humour. Um, well, that's yeah, the thing no, about budgets. Um, back then, you could get a budget, and they'd call it B-grade compared to Hollywood. Trying to get a budget nowadays is just um, there's that many filmmakers. And that's what we've all forgotten. You're all here to promote your projects and oh. your careers. <laughs> Not to listen to silly old men like me talking about watching porn at eight. <laughs> <laughs> when you say it like that, it doesn't sound... <laughs> yeah. So, Cookie, what? what are you working on? What do you want to do? Oh, all right. Um, well, yeah, I've, I've locked down sort of obviously smashed seven colours of crap out of the um, industry pretty well. So any films that I was attached to for lighting or anything like that have all gone wheels up for the moment. Um, I believe they're looking at starting in the second half of the year sometime, depending how the second wave is going here in Victoria. Um, mm -hmm. So, I mean, um, and I've got something else that I'm working on, but I can't really say what that is at the moment other than it's bigger than Ben-Hur and, yeah, it takes me to another level from what I've been doing in the past. Um, big things are coming, I guess. But, that said, you know, I've been throwing myself into a lot of photography. So as soon as we were allowed out, uh, allowed out um, you know, I sort of put an ad up on Facebook and, you know, anybody, any models who want to get some photos done or whatever like that, and I sort of got swamped. And 
so like I, I did, I think I did in two weeks, I did about eight shoots all up, you know, and I tried to space out because I'm filling up, you know, several 32 gig cards full of photos, like 2,000 photos at least um, of these girls and stuff. And yeah, I've got some really, really good shoots, you know, because we managed to get the last end of autumn going there and, and like some absolutely fabulous stuff. Um, and now we're back into lockdown again. I'm like, okay, well, now I'll just do some editing. <laughs> um, the only downside is I had a hard drive die on me, so I lost everything, like a year's worth of work from Lightroom, just Aww. disappear on this hard drive. Um, I'm glad I had the backup of Lightroom and all that sort of stuff. So I didn't lose the, I didn't lose all the raw files. Thankfully, it's just all the work that I've done. So bad, but not too bad. Not pain. Um, yeah, like. Oh. You want to talk about horror film? Have a hard drive die on you. <laughs> or lose um, a hard drive and never be able to find it again. That's my horror story. <laughs> yeah, no, I can't say I've done yeah. that. <laughs> you should but, put yeah, Anastasia no, uh, yeah. down as your next, um, your next model. Well, next that model? Is, oh, yeah, yeah. 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 I, I would. I would. But I start back at uni on the 20th of July. <laughs> so. Uh, <laughs> all right. Well, there's plenty of time for this to shoot yet. I always found it interesting that, like, because, um, again, I absolutely love Terminator, and the whole premise behind that was, like, that people were afraid of new technology. And I always was like, yeah, but you're far more likely to be done in by technology failing you than technology actually coming after you. <laughs> yeah, that's it. That's absolutely it. Yeah, now, so that's Anastasia, what are you, what are you, do? oh, before um, I ask Anastasia, and no, I'm sorry I took over your show, Aaron, there, but uh, the one thing that Cookie's got in common with Anastasia and Victoria, which I don't have, you've all got your diplomas in cinematography. Yes. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, I have them on, on my shows <laughs> because... They're all smart and have got degrees and diplomas in cinematography, and I don't. <laughs> oh, well, it's easy uh, enough I mean, to teach you, Dave. You well, just we need, to we need you for the knowledge. street smarts. We need you for the street yeah, smarts. Yeah, you, like, we would have never been able to set up this podcast without you. You're the one that yeah, like, absolutely. Like, line these things up. Well, I just have you guys on because you don't treat me like crap. You don't put me down about my lack of knowledge and you explain to me what can and can't be done. So, And you all work together well. So that comes to Anastasia. What do you want to promote with your work? Okay. Well, um, the last thing that I was in, I was going to say on, but in is more appropriate, <laughs> was Sinister Symbiosis with Cookie and David. And... Uh, well, that, talking about blood and that was a very bloody, bloody shoot. <laughs> and <laughs> there was, yeah, I think it was also fantastic and it was really, really good because I, um, it's quite funny. Um, I like to consider myself not too dark or I don't know. I, uh, you know, everyone's got their dark sides, but I've never been able to explore mine. And um, because of David's naming the characters, our, our names, it's almost like I had a dark twin I could just, like, into. And it actually really, like, I just basically snapped <laughs> into the shadow side. And it was absolutely incredible. Um, because what happened was... Um, I was in the final year of my Deacon drama degree because I I'm, I'm, was studying two degrees and I've just graduated actually as of the 25th of June um, from my Deacon degree. Um, and I had this, we had to do um, a festival as part of our graduate showcase. And so I basically, because of sinister symbiosis and Anastasia, um, I was able to create this like show which was exploring the dark side and darkness. And it really, like, allowed me, like, to really just nestle in and be comfortable with the darkness. And then, mm. like, I think that's really helped me because I haven't really been able to explore that side of me and explore the boundaries of that of acting. And it was, like, it was really incredible. And it was so much fun. 
<laughs> I remember I remember when we were filming this, and I was watching it from the sides because I did the lighting for Dave on that. And yeah, you could see it. Like you start off, and you're a little bit hesitant or whatever. And then somewhere along the way, it's just like flipped a switch, and then you just, you were like dark as fuck. Hey, it was like, whoa, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> and, and yeah, and you know, and that laugh you had and stuff. I was like, man. <laughs> I was, think what we had comes from. <laughs> Well, I think what we had going for us there was it was predominantly uh, women on the set and that was done on mm. purpose. That meant that you didn't have to worry um, about guys, except that I was there as a guy or more as the victim. But I thought, you know, if I get um, Natasha on as the um, DOP and you've got a woman you can work with, you might, it just might be that thing that lets you go and let fly. Mm. I don't know if you might have done that, so with Gerardo or any other guys uh, being the uh, DOP. I don't know. I just... Because we all get along so well, and I trust you guys, like, with my life. So I'm happy <laughs> to just, like, push all the boundaries. Because we've, we've done other shit before, and it's like... <laughs> I don't know. I just, I just trust you guys with my life, so I know that we're always all good. And... You know, like the more, I, the more comfortable I am with someone, like the further I, I feel like I can go. Mm. Like, yeah, just because <clears throat> I remember we, um, before my drama classes went online this semester, we had to do this um, really disturbing play. We would just choose the scene and like recreate it. Um, and basically, the dude who was um, meant to be attacking me in the scene. I was just like, you know, look, go hard. It's fine. Like, all you do was, like, restrain me and that. But I was like, it's cool. Just go hard. We're all good. Like, I'm cool. <laughs> You're cool. <laughs> and it really worked because it was able to, like, push the tension right down. And it, I think it made my lecturer was slightly uncomfortable, but <laughs> it, 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 it was effective. But, yeah, that, that comes delicious. <laughs> yes. I mean, I totally agree with Anastasia. I mean, I absolutely love the fact that, like, um, when we work with David, we do get things done and they are available on YouTube, which you can totally watch even in this lockdown. Um, and mm. there was, like, yeah, there were, because we just were such a great team that we um, that we built that trust between each other. Um, we can get shots that, um, that you wouldn't, normally be able to get with um, other crew. Like, there was uh, one, um, which was that seance one. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Gerardo yes, shot that, that. That one. That one. Like, I'm a very, like, um, I like my personal space and don't touch me kind of person, yes. right? But, like, um, in that one, I was just, like, um, there was a scene where Dave was, like, holding me and hugging me, and I was, like, yeah, just go for it. And he was, like, because he was, like, grieving and he was, like, shaking me and stuff. And, like, so we got this, like, really emotional scene, right, that, that we only could get because um, I was just completely comfortable with him being able to, like, just hug me and shake me like that. Um, and, like, even one of the other actors, like, there was just this weird moment where, like, um, I was like in the scene, we just spontaneously, I get my throat slit and I'm just like there going, there's no place in the world I'd rather be right now. This is just fantastic. <laughs> 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 I was just having the time of my life on the set. Um, so, uh, yeah, of course, there's those uh, films that um, really, please check them out on um, Darvis Black channel on youtube which um i'm sure you'll have a link there um oh yeah i'll also, get there in the link after yeah um but i've also been having um some of my student films that i've been working on um which one of them uh we have we've had to wait because um we weren't allowed to book out equipment off site um and, like, it happened just when we were filming, like, the very last scene. So we're waiting oh. for the... <laughs> so we're waiting for uh, the equipment to be released, which should be happening in the next couple of weeks um, to film that very last scene. Um, uh, that one's Coffin Run. Uh, currently, oh. we're able to have, like, a Love the name. episode. <laughs> we've been able to cut together a three-episode web webisode. Mm -hmm. Um 
and that should be uh, that that we're looking into doing festivals for that, but um, there. It's obviously more festivals that want short films. So if we do get that last scene, we'll be able to cut together a short film version and do the festival circuit then. Um, and another one that I'm working on is not a horror. It is just, it is a short film um, about, uh, it's about a very traditional family and they're faced with the possibility of being torn apart by a divorce and this uh, the the woman that's at the heart of this is uh, she the the marriage has started to get quite toxic and she is actually starting to be in a bit of trouble uh, with domestic violence. Um, so uh, so we've we've started our uh, GoFundMe. So I I'll put that link down there as well. That. Um, we're trying to raise funds for it and we're just trying to raise the awareness and interest in it. So like, even if people just put in like $5 to like, um, say that they like want to support us making this film, we'd really, really appreciate that. Um, so, uh, I have, uh, we had a Q and A live on Facebook, um, to generate some interest in this film because we really just want more support. Um, like moral support for it as well as like the financial thing does really help us a lot, a lot. We, um, we're, again, we're just waiting for the equipment to be released, which we have heard will be released um, in two weeks' time. So uh, tentatively we'll be able to start filming then. So we're really just, we're coming down to the wire. Uh, we have been doing a ton of pre-production work on this. So, and of course we were doing it throughout the whole COVID virus thing. So it has ha presented us with a ton of challenges, but we have been working really hard and just pushing through and just work, finding workarounds whenever it was like, oh, we weren't able to like do this or we weren't able to do that. We've been doing um, all our rehearsals and stuff online using Zoom. Um, oh, <laughs> so uh, uh, we're hoping that um, now that, the restrictions have relaxed a little bit that we will be able to work out a physical rehearsal. Uh, we already have it cast with amazing, amazing cast. Uh, and yeah, so that's, that's one of the big, bigger projects I've, um, I'm currently working on at the moment. That's nice. That sounds good though. All you guys sound good with the projects you've done and getting ready to do. I know once this whole COVID crap is over, we probably can't wait to get back on set and doing things together again. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But it is a good time, too, to, I guess, to work on some other crafts or <clears throat> if you can do films on your own just by yourself with your phones or whatever equipment you have at your home. Oh. To, to, to start your own shows or continue your shows or get a lot of editing done or for married men, husbands, you know, those things you promise you're going to, you know, your wife, okay, I'll get it done <laughs> six months later. Well, there's no excuse. If, if you're one of the ones who are stuck at home through this whole COVID thing, there's really no excuse anymore. Like, I had to go to work. It's like, no, you didn't. Stop why. You were just watching football on the couch or TV on the couch all day, every day. So, yeah, it's a good time to ca get caught up in stuff. And, it's, I mean, just for me alone with my podcast, I went, like, strictly to – I do video audio now. Before, Dave, when I had you on, it was just audio. We – recorded video but it was just audio as far as when it went out but now it's both and i really just started this like back in march and really just learned a lot more with the green screen and everything i'm learning more as i go so for some things the covid was good not people getting sick and dying and the people that lost their jobs i mean as far as just parts like this it's kind of good you get to kind of work on your craft me for example you get to learn yourself a little bit more and once this is over hopefully we all come out as better people and hopefully things get back to better than normal and get back to the horror i miss it i'm like I, I really do miss going to the theater every now and then to watch a horror movie i'm a homebody mm. when it comes to like as far as like say if my wife and i go out to eat i'd rather go out grab the food and bring it home but now i do miss going out to like a restaurant and getting something to eat yeah so, so many things are so different now but 
we'll see what happens when it all changes, when it all comes back. And I just can't wait to see a movie in theaters again. That's like one of my biggest things. <laughs> it's horrible. <laughs> there was a good, like, two that stand out to me is Halloween Kills and Candyman. Or two films. Okay. Now, the, oh, and The Conjuring 3 is another one. Conjuring 3 and Candyman. Before. Looking forward. Well, Candyman's got another one coming out, hasn't it? Yeah, it has. Yeah, yeah it's, it like, does. It's, it's supposed to be a conti- It's supposed to be. They call it a spiritual sequel, and it's following the original. It's not. It's excluding the second and third one. It's following the original, and it was supposed to come out, I believe, this month. Or it's supposed to be out already. I forgot you now. And as you guys can see, it's not out. But let's see what happens in these next few months if people start wearing their damn masks and listening. If you just uh, it up. I remember when um, I was in high school, I saw Candyman for the first time at a slumber party with my um, best friend. And um, <laughs> we dared her little brother to go to the mirror and say his name three times. <gasps> and on the third time, my friend flicked the switch of, of, of the light on it and it just went dark. And he screamed so loudly. <laughs> like, I think we work up all the neighbors. That was so funny. It was so mean, but it was so funny. <laughs> no, that's funny stuff. You gotta miss it. When it comes to horror. That's one thing I love about horror is when you get the chance to scare somebody. It's their reactions are so freaking hilarious. And it's not even like I don't do it as much now. I haven't done it in a while. Like when I would scare my wife. Nine times out of ten, it wouldn't be on purpose. <laughs> Most of the time, it wouldn't be on purpose, but sometimes you just do it just because, like, I, I'm a person who walks quiet. Like, I guess, if you, like the Jason Voorhees, the Michael Myers, I, I'm just a quiet walker, so you don't hear me walking through the house. And I could just walk in a room how I normally walk, and she'll get mad <laughs> because she didn't hear me. I'll, like, tap her on her shoulder or just something. <laughs> and she's like, what, what, what's wrong with you? Why don't you make a noise? When you? I'm like, I, you know I walk. Why? I don't stomp around the house. It's just not. I was never like. I was never like that even growing up. I don't stomp around. The house. So it is, it is uh, fun doing that every once in a while. Sometimes it's on purpose. Sometimes it's really just me, like walking in the kitchen to get something to drink, and she just happens to be in there and turns around. Like, what are you doing? <laughs> uh, you're you're called what we call here the creeping Jesus. <laughs> you, you you sort of appear and you turn around and oh Jesus, where did you come from? <laughs> I, I do that by accident sometimes, but sometimes it just happens. Yeah. Oh yeah, with me it's like re- it's completely by accident. Um, I I did like my mom. My mom, I like I don't think I'm that quiet. But, like, I don't know, my mom, when she's, like, not paying attention, just, like, won't notice. And, then, like, she'll just turn around, she'll, like, suddenly see me and be like, ah! And I'm just like, why is that scary? And then I started watching all those Japanese horrors where, like, the little girl, like, just appears mm. in the room. I'm like, oh, I understand now. <laughs> some, of, some of that Japanese horror is really good, though. It is yeah. quite scary. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Same with the Chinese horror, like Chinese ghost story. I yeah, like, they, they I, I, like really good. I, I like Silent Hill. Oh, more because like I started off playing the computer games. And then, Silent Hill. Yeah. I just recently watched that movie a couple months ago with my wife. I, that was a good one. I actually watched. Wasn't there like two of them or three of them? Yeah, yeah. Um, they're actually quite good adaptions from um the games. Like, cause usually like. Uh, a lot of the computer game movies tend to ca- get a lot of, like, um, flack for the fact that, like, when you translate a story from a computer game, it's like, mm-hmm. sometimes that just does not translate well into film. But, like, uh, quite a few of the horror films, like, did pretty well doing that. Like, um, I, I really love the Resident Evil series. Like, see, my, see, now my brother? Yeah. He he's a huge Resident Evil game fan fanatic. So like, the films bothered him, but because he's a di- you know when you're a diehard yeah. gamer with that, and then you yeah. the movie and me like I I still haven't watched the movies. I will one of these days, and I'm like an occasional gamer as far as far as the Resident Evils go. I play here and there and all that. I don't the story as well as he does. So like the movie, bo- the movies did bother him. He did enjoy them, but he said if you're someone who's not really into the games that much or if you've never played the games. The movies aren't bad at all, but I, I get that. And like yeah. you know, with Silent Hill, how it, it kind of goes good. The movie follows the game pretty good. I, I like. I, I'm glad to hear that. It's real similar with books and movies. 
You read a book yeah. and then you watch the movie. You're like, what the hell did I just watch? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. And there's like so many times yeah. when it's like, like, um, the book is just so much better. <laughs> <laughs> like I mean, my, I I read um, Do Androids Dream of Electric Sheep and Blade Runner, and I'm just like they are so two completely different things. Like what I imagined when I was reading the book was like it had like a totally different aesthetic feel to it. Like it was yeah. just so and and there's things in the book where they were like um, where they they had that scene where the um, androids trap a spider. And they start like cutting it, and mm. it it's just like it's such an, an like an intense like scene. It is like it's actually like the void comp test as you as you read through it. It's like if you don't if you don't feel more human, like if you don't feel that empathy, then perhaps you should ask yourself if you're an android, <laughs> like because it was just it's um. There's just like so much emotion in the book that just well, did not yeah. translate at all onto the screen. You're totally right, though. I mean, it, yeah, it's the book. I've read the book as well, and it's, it is so totally different. Um, what Ridley did with Blade Runner as a film, though, is it's almost like a standalone thing based on the book. And the book sort of just happened to be yeah. incidentally there. You know, that's how I sort of look at it. Yeah, it was you sort know, of like more inspired by the book. Yeah. And, yeah, I mean, yeah. we we love. I just love watching Harrison Ford because, like, he's hot. <laughs> you got a crush. <laughs> I do. I do. Like, I love him like so many movies, especially Star Wars. Love Han Solo. <laughs> uh, but yeah, but look, but look what Disney did to Star Wars. Now, there's a horror story oh, for yeah. you. Yeah, that's <laughs> man. Sad. That is that is horror. What? That anymore. You know, Disney have gone. <laughs> hey. You guys like this? We're going to kill it. Yeah. yeah. Disney brought out the Gremlins, and Gremlins was, you know, now they've now they've, they've just released the Gremlins into Disney, um, into Star Wars, and it's like dead. Well, it's There's no resurrection though, of that. It was funny though, because um, when Disney bought over Fox, everyone was like, um, "The Alien Queen is now a, a Disney Queen. It's <laughs> really a legit princess." Disney. Do you think yeah. the whole thing with um, <laughs> Disney princesses, they're going to get funny about this whole gender thing? And we're going to have to have um, gender neutral um, oh, that's royalty? Or are they going to say, <laughs> you can't have royalty because royalty is basically oppressive. It's a dictatorship. What's going to change next? We'll see. <laughs> we'll see what this I look forward to all of these things, you know, because a long time ago, the whole idea with the B-grade movies was that they weren't following the Hayes Code, so it created, um, it created uh, a market. You could break the Hayes Code, you had your B-grade movie and there'd be people that would see it. But uh, as restrictions started, um, you know, being loosened, by the time you got Game of Thrones, there's nowhere for a B-grade movie to go because Game of Thrones has just done everything that B-grade would do but with a multi-million dollar budget. So mm -hmm. we need new rules so that filmmakers can break them. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that sounds good. <laughs> Yeah, that's why I'm, I'm, I'm. That's why I'm not online complaining about all of the restrictions. I came close to complaining the other day, and everyone wanted to shout me down because all of a sudden actors aren't allowed to act outside of their own race or out of. For instance, let's say you wanted to play a Jewish character, they wouldn't let you do it. Yet one of the best Jewish characters I ever saw was Donald Pleasance playing a Jewish guy. I he always he said that he had no idea how to play one, but when I saw him, I thought he did a brilliant job. I think an actor should be able to act as everything, including not just race and all of that, but to be able to act as a tree, act as a dog, <laughs> act as a cat, act as anything animate or oh, inanimate. Well, we've done that. We did cat. <laughs> oh. We both did cats. So I thought that was brilliant. We had to get our mindset into... What do cats do? 
Now, Anastasia and myself, we didn't just leave it to chance. We spent, what, about six hours talking about how cats will go after a ball and the different Watching things. Watching cat videos for research. Yeah, and the whole idea is uh, I'm a boy cat, you're a girl cat, let's capture the spirit. As soon as I start bringing in these restrictions that you're not allowed to act as certain things, I mean... To me, that's nuts. So I look forward to all of these new rules coming in so that when they're established and a couple of years have gone by, I can bloody well come in and smash them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, look, I, who knows where that's all going to go, hey? I mean, like I said, at the moment, there's a big outcry of all that sort of thing, you know. Um, but it's, I've always found it an interesting sort of thing to see different cultures playing different cultures. Um, I think there was a movie, oh, God, T tell me how long ago it was White Girls, I think it's called. Oh, oh um, yes. Oh, yeah, yeah. funny. Oh, yes. I'm just trying to think what year that was now. But, I mean, but, you know, but, I mean, we're seeing two black white men chicks. playing two wh white, white chicks. chicks. Yeah, it was something yeah. like along those lines, <laughs> playing two white women. And I'm thinking, hey, that's a really interesting concept. You're like, you're really moving from, you literally seeing it what it's like from someone else's perspective quite literally oh one of the classics like billy crystal do you remember him playing okay. his the teenage daughter and she's pretend like this is a man pretending to be a woman because there's been a body sw switch between yeah. father and daughter that whole right. scene where she's gone off to the toilet but it's him and has never had a penis or used a penis before. Oh, it wasn't I, really crystal. You couldn't get these absurdities if you have to if you're not allowed to explore. So yeah, well, I look for I look forward to all of the changes. I look forward to them pulling down all of the statues and new statues going up. That's cool. I look forward to every change so that there are some new rules that we can actually break in the future. I don't mean breaking rules where you disrespect anybody, but mm. I mean Breaking mm, rules, mm. like they used to have rules you can't show boobs. I mean, jeez, you go back year, enough years, not many, um, and everybody was running around in the nud, and we're doing so for 500,000 years. And then you got 60 years of you're not allowed to show your chachas in public or breastfeed your baby. Let them bring in new stupid rules. I want to break them as soon as there's a new crowd that would actually get offended at it. <laughs> Dave, Dave, you just want to breastfeed in public, don't you? <laughs> oh. Well, that's our next film written. <laughs> I don't know. Did we do a breastfeeding scene with the alien baby? Oh, jeez, did we? Did I don't remember. No, no, no. I was holding ne the baby. Next film. Next I film, breastfeeding. I breastfed the baby because you were trying to kill it most of the time. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, no, if we'd breastfed the baby, because of the silly rules that are there, basically we wouldn't have been able to put that one on YouTube without a restriction. Mm. But, Dave, uh, if you breastfeed, you, you'd be at least allowed to show nipple because at least us guys can show nipple. Girls can't show nipple. We can show you nipple, so you can breastfeed. You can just, pretend, you can just put, like, man boobs on. And just... Yeah. <laughs> oh, that might probably will be one of the next changes, and that that would be a positive one you know, one on nudity. But the way I see it, nudity actually isn't worth anything in a film anymore. I mean, if you go back to 1970, you know, basically the modesty oh, yeah. and what you could see, basically this was a big deal. The fact that I can walk down to St Kilda Beach, not now because it's winter, but in summer, and there's a whole lot of topless women on the beach. And yet I'll get um, actresses saying, oh, I don't want my boobs out. It's like, do you really think they're mm. special? There's like mm -hmm. um, 7 billion people in the world, 3.5 billion are women. Uh, multiply that by two because they've got two breasts. And um, I think they're all on St Kilda Beach on a hot day in the first place. And you want to tell me that that's worth anything? It was worth something in 1970. It's, not, it's worthless now. So it's not a rule worth um, the trouble for breaking. It's not going to get me extra viewers. And if it's important to the script, it's like, well, I'm just going to have to present another script. <laughs> You said it's winter there? Yeah, we're yes. in winter. Yes. Totally. It's the dead right of now. winter and it's freezing. <laughs> That's why I originally set up over there in my nice warm bed with like hot water bottles. And now I'm just like, okay, I'm sitting at this computer now and I'm kind of like shivering. <laughs> <laughs> There's a reason why these girls are wearing onesies. 
<laughs> Except I had to unplug the heater. The thing on underneath the onesie now. I regret not bringing my Pikachu onesie. I'm like, oh, oh. I miss it so much right oh. now. <laughs> I had to unplug the heater so there wasn't going to be any background noise. Oh, oh no! Well, tonight in Melbourne, it's one degree. Damn! Oh wow! Mm. I don't know what that is in in Fahrenheit. Um, I got brought up with Fahrenheit, but one degree Celsius. Uh, I think 30 degrees Celsius is 100 Fahrenheit. It's about... It's, I think it's I'm going to look this stuff now. Hang on. I'll look it up. About 70 degrees here now. About that. But the high is like 80. That's just so crazy. Like, I had no idea what time of year it was there or nothing. There. I'm in summer. You guys are in winter. I'm like, holy shit. It's winter. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah actually it's not too bad a winter last mm. year and the year before were absolutely freezing um and this one hasn't been too bad but we you know how like the rest of the world was reading about how australia was burning down and we were going through heat waves melbourne only had two hot days over all of summer i was waiting for summer really to, i was waiting for summer to happen we didn't get a summer we're we're off track now. We should be talking about movies. You've all talked about what you've done. You've talked about what you want to do. What else is there? Um, I think uh, didn't before uh, sturdy. Uh, didn't you mention like what kind of snacks do you bring to the movies or like what? Yeah. Kind of snacks? Right, he did. Well, yeah, he did. Cookie did bring up a good point. He said, "Depends on wearing watching it." So I'm going to switch it up. So I'm going to say. At home and then at the theater. So at home, mine is like pizza and wings, the theater, candy, nachos, and sometimes popcorn. Yeah. Oh, when I was hey, in hey. Um, Holly, when I was in Hollywood for a little while, uh, just on <laughs> I would have loved to have been there, like on a, some official business. But uh, I was just out on a holiday. <laughs> um, but I noticed that yeah, at the cinemas, you guys have hot foods. We don't have that here in, in Australia. Oh, you do in yes, we do. do. In Gold Class. Yeah, yeah. Gold Class. Oh, yeah. Well, oh, well, you have to pay premium price for like some hot food. And it's like, that's sad. That's how like, they make their money. being able to have a hot dog or something or, or a hamburger or, or chips even. Like, well, actually, well. Vixie, you can't complain because you got, to go, you got given free tickets uh, by, um, to go to Gold Class for Pikachu, and what was that Harry, po Harry uh -huh. Potter one? Oh, I love God, that. Yes, thank you so much for bringing me to those. Those were fantastic. Um, yeah, at the Harry Potter one, they had uh, they had, we had cosplayers there um, at the opening, and they had, like, set up, like, the whole scene of, like, these, uh, like... Um, Diagon Alley? Like, the street. Yeah, Diagon Alley. That's it, with, like, the street lamps and the shop um, shop fronts and people playing the accordion on the street corners. Wow. It was just, like, um, so, and uh, the Pikachu You walked one, through Diagon Alley to get in, yes. then they gave you free popcorn? Yes. Yeah. And <laughs> they had popcorn. people dressed up to welcome you in, and with Pikachu, they, um, they, Gave you free face painting, yep. free photographs. Oh. When Vixie and goes to the cinema, up. she yeah. gets an experience nobody else gets. Yep. And I dressed up as Pikachu. As I dressed up as Pikachu with like a little um, detective hat and a little detective jacket. <laughs> <Nice. laughs> I, I like to dress for the occasion, especially if it's a premiere. Oh, these were the well. premiere. These were before the movie had been released. Oh, the previews. Yeah. It was like a preview. Yeah. Previews. Yeah. No, this was the um, the one that they um, set up for yeah, to impress the uh, press, so that mm. they'll actually write about it. In the huh. past, they used to give you gifts too, so you came away with the goodie bag worth about two hundred and fifty, three hundred bucks worth of um, exclusive goods. Mm. <laughs> I feel so like VIP on these things. <laughs> it wasn't important enough for the um, for the uh, freebies, but we got to see the movie for free. We got yep. fed, and yeah. yeah, we had an experience. And some of these, I had the star. The one that I didn't go to had Kylie Minogue and all of the stars. Ooh. Oh, 
I do like well, that. Well, that's all dried up <laughs> now because I, I, I'm not writing any, oh, anymore. I like Kylie Minogue. She's I so I, oh, yeah. I do. I like. I look. I. I. Look, I um. I. Uh, I also work as a DJ on the weekends, like wedding DJ, and um, I have heard like so many different types of music and I love like all the different genres like even like like the stuff that's like really pop that's like really mainstream and I but I also really like that like you know hardcore heavy metal goth <laughs> underground stuff um and I mean my very very favorite music is um my favorite band is Bon Jovi I absolutely love Bon Jovi this song rock ballads um but the, like seriously there's like so many different types of music and ever I, I really do feel like every single like genre of music has its own like special thing about them that's like that's like that you can enjoy uh, um and like the for me i'll be like uh, there'll be certain bands that i think are like you know the best bands for that genre but like um i really really love like just the fact that there is like such a huge variety you got lost in what you were trying to say <laughs> <laughs> and oh you were about to oh, destroy your reputation by talking about love. kylie the one one of my musics that i absolutely absolutely love is soundtrack music like i really really oh, yeah. love soundtrack oh, songs yes. because because not only do they like you know the the it there's this extra layer of meaning and um story in the song mm. because it has to match like what's going on in the film and it just um like it, uh, very often those soundtracks can like totally lift the film's quality like as well just um by adding that extra layer of um emotional engagement mm. i love I mean, the goblin soundtracks from the dario argento movies I, I, I used to play a lot of goth music when people visited and one day i realized if you just put on a soundtrack by Goblin from any of the Dario Argento movies, you've just got the mood made. Mm, mm. Goblin oh, actually is uh, one of the only people that's allowed to play the pipe organ in the city. Oh. We've got one of the world's largest pipe organs and very few people are allowed to play it. It's at uh, St. Paul's Cathedral. St. Paul's, that's the one okay. on the corner of St. Um, Flinders Street in Swanston. Mm, yeah. When Goblin's been out here, which has been about four times, he's one of the only people in the world that's allowed to play that organ. Well, oh, there you go. I don't know if he plays horror music on it. But, uh, <laughs> Can you imagine that in the ambience? It's like... <laughs> yeah, what Vixie's saying is true about soundtracks. A good soundtrack absolutely carries a film along. And you know, when you buy albums and stuff like that, um, I'll say obviously... My, one of my favourite soundtracks is for Flash Gordon, done by Queen. Um, and my my son, who's young, he's 10 this year, he's sort of getting a good musical education on, on different bands. Of course, Queen's his favourite, loves Freddie. And oh, sort of yes. Thing. And he had, but he hadn't seen Highlander yet. And so that was the ah. experience uh, uh, last weekend, in fact, watching Highlander and, again, Queen music and that as well. So, yeah, that went down naturally a treat. Um <laughs> so yeah but yeah good soundtracks like that i mean rocky horror is another mm -hmm. soundtrack yeah. album and how good is that how good is that oh my god it's like, it gets to sing along. <laughs> i heard the soundtrack before that long before i saw the movie actually the funny thing with the movie i could have seen that um, many years before because i kept being invited but i was up uh, watching um, late night TV when Rocky Horror came on, and I mm. don't. It's probably before anybody's time, you know. But uh, they had Rita lying back on the couch, and she's all sexy, and she's talking about she's going to show Rocky Horror. And then the following week, then Rita Die was on the couch, all sexy, showing Barbarella. And I'm keeping this all as a see my sneaky secret, not telling uh, my dad or my stepmom or anything. And I go off to um, the kindy because there's a, a function on with my uh, youngest sister that they're doing something. 
And I get introduced to my Auntie Rita. Mm -hmm. Auntie. <laughs> I didn't know that the woman on the telly was actually related. <laughs> Wow. That would have been an interesting experience. Uh, wow. Very, because she was there. Um, Izzy Dye was there. He's actually was the more famous. And, uh, yeah, um, their daughter was there with, uh, and it was like, isn't it fantastic how Amira's going to kindy with her uh, cousin? And I'm going, oh, oh, oh. You know, the sexy woman on the tee. That is very imbibed with Rocky Horror and what goes on in that. Mm -hmm. You know, they cut the gay scenes from it. Have you seen them? You can Wait, see them online now. Brad, between, um, Brad and Frankenfurt are Frank actually... Frankenfurt and, and Brad. Yeah, they actually have sex. And yeah, Brad they do, because he, he doesn't realise that she's not... That she's yeah. not, that it's not Janet. And he's like, ah! And he oh, goes, and you've seen it uncut. I, yeah. saw, I must have seen the uncut version, like... Because they're smoking out. Do you want her to see you like this? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and it's just like, ah, my innocence. That was, that was, innocence. That was cut <laughs> from the videos. But the videos also did have um, superheroes at the end, whereas superheroes was uh, cut from a lot of the cinema. Oh, I don't know that. They're different uh, versions of it. Um, where they've cut a song from one and cut a oh, song from another. Right. Yeah, because you've but, got rose-tinted glasses. Um, rose-tinted glasses, let me be free. I, was, I can't remember the other half of the title. Um, Whatever happened to Fee Ray? <laughs> oh, that's not cut. But they were cutting the gay bit, where you know that Brad has actually had sex with Frankenfurter and uh, smoking a cigarette as he sings a song about mm. it. Hmm. They won't cut that nowadays. That would be crazy. Oh, no, because it's accepted, yeah. <laughs> it's now very much accepted. Uh, but it just wasn't when Rocky Horror came out. That really was breaking all of the rules. <laughs> hmm. Rules that is, need to be broken. That's what I say. Yeah, um, I've uh, seen quite a few things where it's like I saw a movie and I was like, uh, and then I saw the director's cut and I'm like, this is so much better. Why didn't they release this? <laughs> and it's just like the director's like the director's cut. They'll they'll cut out stuff that's like, oh, the audience was a little shocked or overwhelmed by the scene, or, or, or the audience didn't really like this tragic ending, or like the audience didn't like when like you know some character that they've fallen in love with dies, um, and. This, it, it kind of annoys me a little bit because I'll see something like um, there was one that was like the boiling doll or something, and one of the characters in like in the uncut version he dies, so that makes sense, right? But they actually cut the bit where they explain that he dies in the um, in the cinema release um, and the one that's on DVD and stuff, and it's just like. Where'd he go? <laughs> what happened to him? Why is she marrying now? Like, is she, like, did she divorce her husband or what? Like, where did he go? <laughs> right? Yeah, that, like, that, that <laughs> indicates like, this, 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 this continuity error that just doesn't make any sense because it's just like, he just disappeared. Of the he just movie. eats himself into the void. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The actor upset like, the director. <laughs> mm. yeah. um, oh, I just remembered they used to show uncut movies that couldn't be shown anywhere else at um, country fairs. Like, you might not know about country fairs. Maybe you do. My mum my you know, mentioned them once. Yeah, about yeah. having to go there and stuff. They, they still have them. But the Royal Show was actually just like what everybody's used to is like the main country fair, but there was a country fair for Pakenham. There was one for mm. every outer, so what, what for every place. And my mum used to show dogs. So we'd go to the country fairs where they had the dog shows. That's where they had the craft shows where they had everything, a mini Royal show with a few little rides and a couple of show bags, like from Sunny Boy. And they all had the tent with the movies. And the first lot that they used to show was the 0.05 ones which was the police showing movies to convince people oh, yes. not to yeah. drink oh, and drive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you had to be over 18. So, of course, being little kids, we snuck in. And you'd see <laughs> uncut car crashes, horrible shit. 
And then they had the next one for VD. And then oh, you, would, yep. you would see mangled badgies and penises and everything. <laughs> then after that, you would see all of the films that people had made. So it was anything goes. This, these were your um, ones that Aussie filmmakers had made on your 8 and 16 millimetre cameras. And, yeah, the country fairs used to show uncut movies, stuff that you probably couldn't even show nowadays. Oh, wow. I remember. I remember when the um the Grim Reaper ad for when they you know people suddenly became aware of HIV came out. You know the ten pin yeah, bowling one. I you, you remember that that. I saw it when it was released. I, you know, I was you know sort of just finished high school, about to join the air force, sort of thing. So I was sitting there watching daytime TV, and the ad, this ad came on. I'm like, what is this? You know, it just blew my mind. Like, and then of course everybody got on the crazy went ten pin bowling as a Grim Reaper then, but. Um, but it was like, wow, what that? I remember there was a huge uproar because people were like, no, you can't show that. It's too horrific. You know, the little baby goes, hey, and all that sort of stuff. It's so cool. <laughs> you know, oh, there was cool. another one. There was another one that got cut that was um, soon after that. The Grim Reaper is like your first shock um, ad. <coughs> this that one after so it. Cool. The one, mm. the next it, it one that like... came out, I can't even remember what it was about, but a person is about to eat a hamburger and there's a fish hook sticking out of it mm. and that actually goes into the person's lip and they cut before they pull out and rip the whole lip off. And I can't even, re like the Grim Reaper was for ads, I can't even remember what this one was for. Australia went into meltdown about watching slowly, they're saying whatever the threat is. I can't remember what it oh, was. Oh, yeah. Oh, that might have been pollution. Might have been about pollution. It could have been mm. about whatever. And to talk about the threat, the person is about to eat a hamburger and the hook is about to go through the lip. And it, oh, it was hard to watch, but Australia went into meltdown. That was just after the Grim Reaper and that was the end of shock ads. They said, right, Grim, the Grim Reaper was only shown once or twice. That was it. Wow. It was because of the fish hook one that um, that came to an end. Nowadays, well, you, you, I mean, seriously, you can't go ruining a good hamburger like that. Though, so, yeah. you know, <laughs> can you imagine? It's like everyone, it's like when they when people were talking about people ruining hamburgers or something about people. No, the strawberries and pins. People putting needles in strawberries. It's like every time you go for a oh. hamburger, it's all like. Oh. Huh? Yeah. Oh, I got a hamburger story for you. Do you remember Alvin Purple? <laughs> No. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Alvin Purple uh, was a character. And um, basically, Alvin Purple was from softcore uh, porn movies that were all uh, humorous. Okay. And uh, the, the concept was that all of the women used to want to, um, wanted to jump his bones and have sex with him. And so they've got a couple of Alvin Purple movies out. And they get the actor that played Alvin Purple, Graham Blundell, to advertise Hungry Jack's hamburgers. Hungry <laughs> Jack's is the same as Burger King in the USA. <laughs> yep. And they have, and the, um, the song that went with it, it takes two hands to handle a whopper, the two fisted burger from Hungry Jack's. You got to shove it in, you got to pull it out, you got to twist it round. It was absolutely filthy having a porn star saying it takes two hands to handle a whopper. <laughs> oh, I didn't realise he was a porn star. <laughs> so I just saw those ads and I was just like... Oh, it takes your hands to handle a whopper. <laughs> well, it's like Bixie's mind has been blown. Oh, yeah. I, I tell you what, I tell you what, it adds a new meaning to special sauce, doesn't it? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> they actually made jokes as bad as that, but the worst thing is that they're showing kids during it. The kids oh, are the no. ones that sing, you got to shove it in, you got to twist it round. Oh, man. Hmm. <laughs> but, I mean, that's not yeah. like the kids don't even know that. I mean, that's like, what advertising oh, is, sex yeah. sells. So. Like, I mean, that's why oh, a, lot yeah, of, a lot of Disney Pixar stuff, right? They'll hide those innuendos and it'll just, like, sell right over the little kids' heads. But it's, like, little, like, Easter eggs for the parents to see. The parents. <laughs> that's what Warner Brothers was very much like when I was a kid. Bugs Bunny, you watched it as a kid. You knew, you saw those 
um, cartoons that many times you knew them off by heart but a few years goes by and you see it then as an adult you go my god i didn't <laughs> know that joke yeah, that's what he's doing with that carrot okay <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, um, but I mean, some of the things that I was like um, that have been cut out of films um, in the Asian um, release of Ace Ventura, they cut out like the part where it reveals like that the guy is a transvestite, and like so, it literally doesn't make like you like you you if you watched it without that scene. Wait, man, <laughs> cut to what? like the scene what, the that? Time, what happened? How, like, how do we know, like, because it's the big, that's the big reveal. That's the, who's the killer? Yeah. <laughs> oh, right. See, I, I've seen the Ace Ventura Pet that Detective. Scene, you're I haven't just seen the like, first one. Who did it? I don't get it. <laughs> I saw this um, <laughs> film, a Japanese, a Japanese horror movie. And you'd be like, why is he chewing gum? I don't understand. I saw a Japanese horror movie. Um, now, Aaron might uh, be able to tell me which one it is, but it's got flying saucers, it's got zombies, it's got rock and roll in it, and uh, the, um, the main guy that's in it finds out that his love interest has a penis. And uh, do you remember which one it is? I'm not, I'm not sure about that one. No, was this a crying game? <laughs> We go no no. Um, I've actually got it on the shelf over there somewhere. It's considered one of the craziest schlock movies ever, and it's a Japanese one. And uh, the main character, he's always got Elvis talking to him and advising, and he gets told off for rejecting um, his girlfriend when he finds out his girlfriend is actually a boyfriend, saying rock and roll doesn't discriminate. <laughs> I mean, that seems pretty fair. Can't argue with it. <laughs> I just wish I remembered uh, which, uh, which. It's one of the best schlocky horror uh, Japanese schlocky films. Schlocky horror. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love a bit of schlock. Wow. Has any, any of you guys seen that Korean film that won the Oscar this year? Because that's supposed Paras to be horror, isn't uh, it? No. Train to Paras Busan. Paras oh, I love that movie. I saw a trailer where they, I saw a bit where they were showing the script alongside the actual scene. I was like, whoa, that's all it is with this one scene. Um, but I didn't get to, it was, I didn't get to see the whole thing. My mom saw it and she's like, it's good. You need to watch it twice. I saw a tutorial um, at uni about how, really how, they, how they filmed, like how they, uh, how they used like um, the screens of like, and um, like the digital, like how they got the train to like, so it looks like, you know, there's the outside of the train and the motion. And oh, everything. are you talking about Train to Busan as well? Yeah. Oh, because we were talking about Parasite. Yeah, oh. we were talking oh, about Parasite. That's my fault. I, I said Train to Busan without even thinking. So Vixie's heard me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sorry. I, was I couldn't get cold. through it. I know everybody loves it, but the whole fast zombie thing, I'm watching it and trying to read it at the same time, and I thought, no, nah, this is too much. I've got the flurry of too much action in my face, and I'm supposed to read what's on the bottom of the screen. I can't get through it. <laughs> oh, so, movie, well. I'm yeah, told it's one of the to... best ever. So I do have to reapproach it, come back they, and uh, give it another shot. They, they build the tension really well in Train to Busan. Um, as well as like yeah, just visually and stuff that just it looks so like for lack of a better word, real. <laughs> like, <laughs> oh, it looks great, and the actors and actresses and all that they did an amazing job. Yeah. The way they move their bodies, I was like, what the? How do you do that? What the hell? That was great. Yeah. I'll give it another shot then, as well oh, as this other one that you mentioned. Parasite. Yeah. Well, the great thing, uh, so the interesting yeah. thing about Korean film is that I can segue into talking about what we were asked about, which is food, <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> or about about an hour ago. And like, because I, I, we had lockdown, I sort of thought, well, I'm going to make um, Korean wings, chicken wings. So I've sort of perfected my Korean chicken wing thing, which has become my at home staple for um, watching movies. Um, so I'm sort of I'm sort of with Aaron there when he said, you know, he likes pizza and wings and stuff. I'm like, well, yeah, I'm, I'm down for that pizza and wings sort of thing, and maybe a beer and whatever. Um, but yeah, when you go to the cinema, when you actually go to the cinema, it's, you know, you buy a, a bucket of popcorn and a 
and you sort of get through that while you go through all the ads, you know, half an hour's worth of ads, you eat popcorn. And then, then the Maltesers sort of um, to tie you over the movie, and if you've got Maltesers left, it's a good movie. So that, that's Do you ever my... have the problem with the fan tales? You buy fan tales at the movies, but you can't read in the dark. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, I used, I used to collect them. Hey, I used to come home with a big, bloody big pile of wrappers that I don't know why, because they're all the same. Well, yes, I, I, well. I, I can't eat fan tails anymore because last time I ate one, I broke a tooth. Oh, <laughs> oh even as a kid, they used to pull out a filling. Uh, like, so, yeah, no, I can't, I can't eat them anymore, unfortunately. But, yeah. No, I don't think they, they have. Do you have, like, fan tail hot chocolate? Like, sachets? Oh, yes, what? yes. I don't know where you get them from, but they're fan tail hot chocolate sachets. I think they've got caramel. If you find out where they, if you find out where they are, let me know. I want some of those. I'm down for them. I, I will. I will. I will message you because you know fan tails. I think is two years ago. Melbourne. You got to make some for me. I think fan tails are purely an Aussie thing that they don't have them in America. You know, they also don't have in America show bags. Shut oh. really? Show, show bags. Don't they have them at Comic Con? And stuff like that. I don't have show bags. No show bags. Oh, you do it's have purely a show bag started in Australia with the country fairs, and places yeah. started giving out a bag to give out free samples of their um, uh, of their product to get people to to buy it. And then they realised when they were giving out their free samples that when you got five people all giving out a free sample of rice, nobody's going to grab all five bags so they started putting toys in them and mm. uh and, and giveaways like that nowadays it's big business so you've got um, a freddy krueger show bag it's got nothing yeah. to do with samples anymore you just go in and the freddy krueger one will have a glove and all of this stuff you got the chemist one which has got incontinence pads and god knows what and there is a show bag for everything and Aussies love show bags. The bag itself okay. has got beautiful pictures on the outside of whatever they're selling. Mm -hmm. So if you buy the Spider-Man show bag, you got um, a big bag with Spider-Man on the outside and a Spider-Man uh, plastic mask and Spider-Man everything and a Spider-Man comic. And they don't do that in America. I reckon the oh, idea... I'm surprised by that. Yeah. I think if Monster Convention started doing that, um, it would take off because it'd be unique to monster conventions. They hit yeah, up so have everybody. A, have a David Black show bag over in the US. Oh, no. no. A There's a Count <laughs> Fungula <laughs> Mini. Oh. Good you Lord, can buy a Count Fungula <laughs> Minis, <laughs> but I don't think they're selling well yet. Mm. Not yet. They will in time. Oh, no show bags. Cool. Wow. No. Do, you, do you guys in the US feel a bit ripped off that you don't have show bags? I do now that I know what they are. <laughs> but, we uh, could get you the link to <laughs> all of the show bags that are at the last Royal Melbourne show. Oh, yeah, because they, they probably can't sell them because it's, oh, but Royal Melbourne show happens in you September. Can sell them online. What? I think you can buy show bags. Like, you should be able to buy show bags. Them on, on eBay. Um, well, they'll, like, fence parts of show bags on eBay. Oh, <laughs> It's such an easy thing to make. The very first show bags, when it came down to the comic books that were in them, basically whatever comic books had been sold at the news agencies that were unsold that the news agencies would now return, they got resold. Like if they were a 12-cent comic, they got resold for a cent and a, a, a place would buy up hundreds and hundreds of them for next to nothing, chuck them into each bag. Mm -hmm. And that, that's what they were putting in with the, um, the Sunny Boy ones. It's pretty much oh, quite often yes. unsold stock. Oh, that's yeah, I, my, my first Sunny Boy was from a show bag. And my yeah, first Sunny Boy was with, everywhere. Sunny Boy. Yeah. Um, and my first oh, connection with oh. the Avengers was from <laughs> a show bag as well. I had the, my first comic book with the Avengers in it. Oh, oh they, that's right. They don't have Sunny Boys anymore, do they? Oh, don't they boys. have Sunny Boys either? Now, you know what Sunny? You know what was before Sunny Boys? Frozen <laughs> oranges. People didn't have fridges, and basically the milk bar was the only place that could afford an ice box because a big thing of ice costs money. So they would freeze oranges, and people would buy them. But as soon as everybody had a fridge, somebody oh, came wait, up with the idea. 
the the triangle cone things with the orange yes. inside them? Yeah, that's okay. the one. Yeah. I, I think I vaguely remember having that once. Very rare. <laughs> vaguely. <laughs> Well, Sunny Boy were the the biggest manufacturer of show bags, like in the seventies. Any country mm. fair you went to had a Sunny Boy show bag that you could buy. Yep. It had a comic book in it and a Sunny Boy, um, and a whole bunch of other stuff. Uh, yeah, so they're true, like yeah. they're like lolly bags on steroids. Basically, <laughs> yes. Yeah, they were really cool. Like you, like you just, it was like Christmas almost when you went to the show. You come back with a bag full of you know, a comic book and some lollies and a Sunny Boy and all this really cool shit that you'd you know, throw out in a year's time. But it was great. It was like fucking Christmas. It was brilliant. Well, uh, half of really, it is really great on the tram like, on the, the way Wild home. Show and I've never had a show bag of any kind. So like, oh <laughs> like, no. Like, yeah, I've never been to Roll Member Show at all. I've never been to any kind of show like that. And I've never been able to get show bags. Oh, the Royal Show is fantastic. You need to go. Yes. Next, yeah. you're going to say you've never been to Luna Park either, aren't you? No, I've been. <laughs> oh, I'm no. not allowed to freak you out. You thought about that. <laughs> oh, oh, my God. I think it was from a birthday party. This is a bit like the children under the stairs, what? except it's the Anastasia under the stairs. <laughs> Very I'm Harry serious, you've never been to Luna Park. <laughs> I've been to Little Park once and I can't really remember all of that. It was a birthday party and it was like a spider ride and ghost train. What? But I don't even know if I've actually been on I can't remember if I went, if I went on any of the rides or it, just, it was like... Dave, was Dave, I've got an idea. Let's do a film in Luna Park. No, because I actually called them and wanted to. and the oh, amount they wouldn't they leave wanted, you? No, the amount they wanted to charge. A, oh, a lot really? of the time, a lot of the time with our films reason why we well the uh, Luna Park was a couple of grand they were asking I think I think the uh-huh. old Melbourne jail asked me for seven grand oh, yeah, they, fil- want big, they want big the film yeah. at Brighton Cemetery um, was two grand so basically I just go with whatever I can get for free or very cheap so uh, I think one drink too many. Technically, that place wasn't free. I had to put a couple of hundred down, but we could um, use that money in uh, drinks and food. Oh. So, mm-hmm. yeah, budget-wise, I mean, we're, we're constrained by where we can film. A lot of places that I would love to film at. I, I even at the Immigration Museum, I asked, can we just film in that one little section where you got a boat? And they had to have a committee meeting and go through everything to come back with an amount that they knew was unacceptable. That was up around a couple of thousand. And they come running to me saying, oh, yes, but we're poor. It's like, no, you're not (laughs) poor. I bet you your CEO lives in bloody Turak and that you get 200,000 a year. When I look at it, it's like I'm a telemarketer. You don't get more poor than I do. Don't yeah, ask. You do. <laughs> In the Australian you know. film industry, you can't get any poorer than that. <laughs> film student and a drama student. <laughs> I actually save up for our no-budget ones so that I can actually give the makeup artist maybe 50 bucks towards product, give different people a little bit of amount to cover what they've got. And the whole idea is, right, you've now got um, footage that you can use to promote yourself. You can have access to everything. For the uh, photographer that comes in, well, you had nothing to shoot. (laughs) You've now got something interesting. You have to make your photos available to everybody that gave up their time, just like we're all working together because we get something out of it. The one thing that we don't see is money. But, Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I have to save up. to actually be able to, to shoot, just to cater for the day. So, well, I mean, what, Park, one of the things I give you credit for is, is the fact is that your shoot's actually quite reasonably catered compared to some films I've been. Yeah, on. you um, you bring the food. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, I mean, you, you take the time to do this stuff, you know. It's really well, worth it because it, no one's hungry. No one's hungry. <laughs> yeah, what I well, I first started doing shoots pretty much with yourself and Vixie Anastasia, um, just going on to everybody else's um, sets. And I travelled on one of the sets all of the way up to Ararat or something or or past. And uh, I think it was four hours on the train up, four hours on the train back. And and the guy had as lunch 
a Vegemite sandwich. Two oh, pieces of bread, Vegemite <laughs> in it. When we did That's the uh, la when I did the last taupe, everyone stood in line for two slices of bread, a little bit of lettuce, two bits of tomato, and I think and yep. one slice yep, yep, of yep. cheese. Yep, and yep. I was watching that. No one's really concentrating on the 12 hours that they're on set because they don't mm. want to miss out on being fed. So the first thing I realised is have food out from the very first minute. Tell everybody that you can go up there any time, grab a soft drink, grab a muesli bar, grab whatever, and try to have something at lunchtime if possible. Um, but make sure the food is there straight up because every set I went on to, with the exception of one, nobody was fed properly. You got the growling tummies, you got everybody distracted. So, yeah, the first yeah, cost on yeah. our sets, I don't consider them well catered compared to, you know, but 150 goes down instantly to um, feeding everybody. So, well, you know, an army moves on its stomach. <laughs> yeah, there has to be food throughout the whole day. Everyone performs better when they're like well fed. Like everyone has more energy and like and and when you can just like um like grab it when you have like a moment then mm. like you're not waiting or you're not just like standing around in line for ages like i mean mm. you mm. can just like grab a quick bite in between takes and things like that so you can just keep like the flow of like actual work happening while you go yeah it's yeah. amazing I mean, just how different the f foods can be on different shoots like i say i've been on shoots like dave said you know the way the best they can do is some white bread sandwiches for christ's sake um, you know, and you've got a whole crew of people, and like you're going to be kidding, you know. Um, but I've been on a sh I've been on a student shoot where they had um like they lived back door to this house we filmed in, and her mother was really supportive and a, and a big foodie. So we end up to having Moroccan roast lamb and all these oh, salads, and wow. it was hands down the best food I've had ever. Like I virtually licked the plate; it was so good. Um, Same here. And she loved it. She. And she loved it because like, she's a foodie. She's like, oh, everyone loves the food. Great. You know, so it was like just food was just pouring. And, and everyone's like, yeah, this is, this is good, you know. Um, and it was freezing cold. It was wet. It was a miserable shoot. So the food was just on point and it made it, made it a good shoot. But, you know, you get the other end of the spectrum where they, they serve up some white bread and some Vegemite, maybe a bit of imagination. And, yeah, you come away <laughs> feeling pretty miserable on that. <laughs> and, and yeah, you know. Very acquired taste, I understand. Like, um, there in America, I understand. Like, a lot of people, um, like when they try it, they really hate it. <laughs> yeah. oh, of course. The one thing yes. with my shoots, I don't consider them well catered, but uh, the the food's there. But they're a one day shoot. You're going mm. on to shoots, Glenn, uh, Cookie. Oh yeah. But, um, yeah, yeah. A seven days straight, and you're up there for seven, uh, ten hours, twelve hours, oh. seven days straight. If you take something like The Legend of Ben Hall, that went for nine and a half weeks, and some of those days were starting at, like, four in the morning and finishing at two o'clock the next morning. They were huge oh. days. Again, you and we got into winter. And one of, yeah, and one of those days, look, they had a chef for that, and, and he was one of those pub chefs. He cooked meat and spuds and do all that traditional sort of stuff. But we had a lot of vegans and gluten-free people, so he didn't really know how oh, to cook God. that stuff. Yeah, so he didn't really know how to cook that stuff, but on this, it was particularly miserable. It was a really, really cold day, and it was raining, and it was blowing a gale, and, you know, Ben Hall was out riding on his horse and doing all these things like that. And someone spread this rumour on the set that there's going to be bacon. Oh, and, and all the And even vegans have to admit they love the smell of bacon at least. But, you know, there was going to be warm food. It was going to be great because we'd been eating shit up to that <laughs> point. And we got to the catering tent, and there was a lettuce and onion salad, like there was just chunks of lettuce and onion salad, and this polenta tart with some sort of makeshift egg, like it was a little thin layer of egg on top of this polenta base. That was it. That was lunch. And oh, you've, never, no. you've never seen the spirit die in people so badly. Like the, I remember the armourer, John Curie was the armourer with the guns and stuff. He was so fucking... He had Ben Hall's gun there. He's like, I'm going to shoot that fucking cunt in the head if he says this is shut up fucking... And he just wandered <laughs> off somewhere. You know, He was, he was like <laughs> genuinely pissed off because the food was just non-existent. Um, they were really pushing things to the limit on budget and stuff. And, yeah, when you're out there and you're doing it hard, like I say, stupidly long days, 
no, that's that's an endurance test, you know. And I, I could admit I'm sort of starting to get a bit pissed off with all that sort of crap. You know, Dave's shoots go for five hours, and there's muffins and some chips, and there's a coffee, and there's cans and drink or whatever, and that, that's perfectly fine, you know. And we have a good time on shoot, you know, like say with Anastasia and um, Vixie and you know, us guys generally, I think um, of late, and they're good vibe shoots, you know. They're fun. You know, we all have a good time. There's, you have something to eat, a drink, and you just kick on and it, it gets done. It's when you get onto those other shoots where they're, you know, they're trying to take it to that level, but they're cutting it so fine on budget and the food's not there. Yeah, you, you come away after nine and a half weeks wondering why the fuck you're doing it. <laughs> you know, I went and, on a few that yeah, um, you know. they just taught me. I mean, now it sounds like I'm bad-mouthing where I got my start, but the truth is I hated waiting around for six hours doing nothing um, in the freezing cold. Um, and so I wanted to do things very differently on mine. Um, all of the ones that I went on in my first six months were horrid. I met you on one of them. Do you remember? Um, yeah, the Pokemon I, one. I could have act If I hadn't met you and you had let me put, my stuff in your car, yeah, in my car, had, yep. And you gave me a pep talk. That might have been the last of me ever in a movie. It was freezing. I didn't know where I was. There, there, everything was falling apart. And at yeah, least yeah. one person was friendly and said, yep. "Mate, put your stuff in here. It'll be here when you get back." There was really you couldn't really change properly because. <laughs> the way oh. they set things up and that was uh, a dog's breakfast and it wasn't the worst I was on and it was bloody freezing and the guy was willing just to leave everybody waiting there forever doing nothing. Um, I grabbed up all of the muesli bars and started walking around to the people on the crew because they had yeah, remember that. Yeah. It's because um, all of the extras have got nothing to do and they're about to go off and start eating it, all of the food and you'd told me about the problems and I said, fuck it, I'm not going to let these guys, because they could walk over to, you know, the 7-Eleven if they wanted. There was no food for you guys on set. So I just started grabbing the muesli yeah. bars because I knew you could yeah. eat them on the run. And yeah. uh, that wasn't even the worst of them. I went through such a miserable set after a miserable set after a miserable set, watched these uh, people that made their film self-aggrandizing watched the bullshit where people were posting about it and the way they spoke when they posted, you know, it was like if I wanted to compliment you, I'd say, Glenn, you did a great job. I wouldn't be writing online, Glenn, you are my great messiah. I could not live without you. Um, and <laughs> you've seen it, haven't you? Yeah, I know people, what you're talking about. <laughs> Yeah, they're the narcissistic shits that cause problems later on because they didn't get you uh, worshipping them. But set after set after set, extras being left to freeze, uh, crew not being yep. um, given sufficient breaks or being That's told so properly what to do. The problems that were on the sets were ridiculous. And, jeez, I get a lot of complaints about my sets, but I promise you, it comes from the narcissistic <laughs> types. <laughs> yeah, look, I mean, no, your sh I mean, as like, so I go back to saying what about your shoots, Dave, there's your shoots, I mean, they're small fry compared to some of the stuff I've been on, but, you know, then by not even close to the worst sets I've ever been on, you know, they've, they've got a good vibe, they're fun, uh, depending who's on it. <laughs> yeah. I, mean, I, don't, I, I don't think we're going to have that problem in the future, but, um, you know, they're fun, um, yeah, they're catered. We all have a laugh. We all have a, you know, we get in and we do the job and come out and we see the results and, and yeah, they're great, you know, and that at the very basic level is what I think, you know, um, grassroots filmmaking should be about because if it's not fun, why the fuck are you doing it? Exactly. You know, I, think, um, I think a lot know, of us got into it. It was fun when we got into it because we might have been kids. You know, you had your oh, Super well. 8 camera or what came along later and, uh, mm -hmm everybody had fun because they were kids and they weren't um, whatever the worries are of these other filmmakers we don't have because none of us are looking for money. So I put them out for free. Well, <laughs> well yeah, I uh, mean, we are, it's... we are at some point. I expect that um, <laughs> if we're lucky, 
everyone will make a name for themselves. Like, we'll go on lots of podcasts like this. The public will see you. They will see your films. And then suddenly somebody, like uh, Anastasia won't have to say to somebody she's going for a movie with that she doesn't have a show reel. Oh. <laughs> You've got all of that, that material. <laughs> we have enough to, to cut my new one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so... You build your name, you create the value for your name by doing your movies. And our movies mm. have been on TV in the United States and more recently South Australia too. Mm. Uh, so, yeah. Oh, well, that's uh, reaching the big time. <laughs> no, we've been on TV in the United States. You've seen there's about half a dozen hosted horror shows that showed us. Mm. We've been in the theatres in the United States. Now, it wasn't big yes, TV, yes. wasn't big theatres. But, it, you know, compared to somebody else that's come out of nowhere and done nothing, you say, well, geez, I've been on um, 12 uh, TV stations in the United States. I've been shown in four cinemas. Well, I mean, um, Malevolent Pursuit, I think, went on uh, free-to-air TV in front of, what, potential audience of 68 million people. You know, that's like three times the size of Australia's population or something like that, which is like, what? Yeah, <laughs> you know, it's, that's not too you know, bad. <laughs> People here in Melbourne couldn't believe couldn't believe that sort of level of stuff. But then again, they don't think that sort of thing, you know. Well, the thing is, you uh, might have gotten ten percent of that uh, potential, and it's still more than what you'll get here, unless you've got the biggest show here. But the biggest show mm. here only gets two million people. That's uh, Walid Ali's show, uh, the project, and everybody goes on oh. about. Uh, the Today Show, right, the, the, the morning show. The morning show's mm. only got 250,000 watchers. When um, mm. the, the Channel 9 and Channel 7 one go to war with each other and talk about how many viewers they've got, one's got 300,000 this week and the other one's got 250,000 this week. Well, some people put things on YouTube and they've got 10 million viewers. Yes. There mm. are perspectives here that uh, haven't dawned on people because... Things have changed over the years and their their thoughts haven't. I'm thinking if you're going to get into, um, well, for instance, um, Sinus, uh, oh, I forgot what it's called, that one we've got um, the Vixies in where you smash the set up at the end. <laughs> the one in the park. Is it oh, cannibal, uh, cannibal, uh, cannibal Barbecue has got... Yeah. Um, it's not, not big time for other YouTubers, but we've got 200,000 views. In other words, you've got as many views on YouTube as what um, the third biggest TV show in Australia gets. That, that's a perspective we're not putting <clears throat> things into. And we're actually facing at the moment what is really an extinction level event for the um, entertainment industry. Nobody wants to put it that way. But oh. a hell of we've just lost two TV stations, Channel Forty Four mm. and Channel Thirty One. Yes, yep. the ABC has been cut back like you wouldn't believe. They're all things that are dying anyway, but they're going to take twenty five years to die. No, you're quite right. You're quite right. But it's sped things up. It sped things up. That with the transition, television will survive, but only a small percentage of it. It's going to level out compared to what's online. Just like newspapers were once big and they levelled out a bit when radio came out but still remained big, radio levelled out a bit when TV came along but still remained big. TV lost a bit when, um, you know, video came out and video lost a whole lot when VOD came out. Well, mm. television's about to take another bit of a dive. Newspapers are taking a bit of a dive. Online, yeah. we're doing fine. Yeah, look, it's not, it's not surprising, really, you know. Um, I mean, some of the stuff that's on free-to-air TV here in Australia, I don't know what it's like in the States, but, you know, it's, it's just beyond dreadful these days. You know, probably the budgets aren't there enough to have a half-decent writer or anything. I don't know if you guys have seen the show on the ABC called Operation Buffalo. It's no, I haven't Maralinga. had a television about, for 20 years. You know, it's, a, it's about the Maralinga tests and stuff like that. Now, they could have made a really interesting um, show based around real, you know, real stories and stuff like that. Instead, they've based it around, okay, yes, there were nuclear tests there, and then the rest have just made up on the spot sort of thing. And it's 
it's some of the worst stuff I've seen on TV ever. Mm-hmm. Um, like there's just no, they've never done any research of anything that might be military um, and anything that they have done, it's either US-based military or English-based military and very stereotypical. So one of them did a salute. They're supposed to be English. They did a salute and looked like bloody Benny Hill. Um, you know, they've got Agent Carter in there, you know, uh, Agent Carter being uh, Captain America's girlfriend from World War Two. You know, we're, we're talking 1957, 58, and we've got someone who looks like she's from the 40s, for goodness sake. And she's doing the whole, you know, whole Agent Carter routine. It's like, what the fuck is this shit? You know, huh. um, but, you know, bringing it all back there, yeah, writing has just gone down the tube. Um, well, I think that problem happened when we went digital. Uh, what happened was when you had the analogue TV, you had channel 10, mm. 9, 7, 2, 0, right? And that was it. But as soon as um, the, when leading up to the analogue signal being taken, off when digital came on to convince people they said right we've now got four channel tens four channel nines four channel sevens four channel twos mm. i didn't even know what people were talking at the time they'd say oh, i was watching channel two and i go yeah i didn't see that and i go no i was watching abc go or abc Heart. <laughs> yes. well yep. before even that we had television that started at six in the morning and finished at 11 30 at night then you had 24 hours so they needed more product then they go oh we've got 24 hours times four 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 oh, well talk about saturation the the need for product means that they're buying crap buying crap from mates by the way because our stuff beats a hell of a lot of the stuff that they put in from their mates I, I, I'm not actually all that upset that the ABC is going. That's going to really go down bad with a lot of people. But when that bullshit came up with Ida Buttrose, do you remember? Ida oh, Buttrose was... Um, it's only about a year ago, by the way, year and a half. <laughs> it's been a busy but- half a year. <laughs> Ida Buttrose was given a major position at the ABC. It might have been chairperson or something, but basically yep. the big wig. And that job paid a lot of money each year. I don't know what it was, 250000 a year, 500000 a year. Mm. The board at the ABC, and I've probably got the um, details not quite exact enough, but the board wanted her to make a particular decision for them and they were overstepping and she refused. So she got sacked. So she sued them. She got paid <laughs> out hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of thousands That's by right. the ABC. So when I see the ABC crying poor, saying we've got to ax 250 jobs, it's like, what was that bullshit you just pulled a year ago where rich people mm. got put in, in charge of it? That's not about yep. the people. No. And yep. rich people then got paid shitloads of money. I mean... The ABC is not the ABC that we originally were. We were told uh, to use an American term by the people, for the people, of the people. It's no, it's rich people. Well, they've got the money so they can put it where their mouth wants it to be. Most of our media has all been about rich people and who you know. We are able to put up our own stuff on YouTube without knowing anybody whatsoever. And the general public can come along and make up their own minds. So that's a level playing field. It's not really because, I mean, YouTube's got their algorithms and they're sort of going Mm. that way. But nothing's stopping us from putting it on YouTube. We've got a, a level playing field. If you want to look at the playing field itself... Do you remember just two weeks ago or three weeks ago, there was the We Are One Film Festival? No. I've kind of been out of the loop. Okay. (laughs) Something like 20 or 30 of the world's biggest film festivals came together, right? Cannes and God knows, it was about 30 of the biggest ones. Uh, Uh, Dance and something like that. uh, Myth was in it. But, uh, yeah, basically you've got the – I'll get you all of the information later, but 20 or 30 of the world's top film festivals came together to do it online together. 
and their opening night and closing night, you've, which is all about all you can see online, because although they showed the films, they took them offline. They're not there to stay up there forever. So the opening and closing, which have got big actors like Robert De Niro and Whoopi Goldberg, you go and have a look at it. They only got 6,000 views. <laughs> That's because they didn't leave it up. If they left it up, it would have more views. No, I'm talking about the stuff that's up there, not the stuff that's oh. down. The oh. opening where people are talking and Robert De Niro and oh. Whoopi Goldberg are saying, hey, it's fantastic, look at this big international film festival, blah, 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 blah. And so they've still got all of that up there. They only got 6,000 views. Not much. The point is oh, when you no. level the playing field, people who you think are big aren't necessarily that big. People who you think are small suddenly become giants. That's very true with stuff like that. I say good riddance to the ABC. It never, it, it was when I was a kid, something different to now. Everybody oh, will be totally attacking me. Everyone will be attacking me saying, oh, no, the ABC and SBS and Channel 31, they're there to give the little fellas a shot. No, they're not. Kind of insulting. <laughs> I was told I could get my show on Channel 31 if I paid for the airtime and brought them in two sponsors. And I thought, fuck that, all my money went into making my no-budget film. I can't <laughs> give you uh, $200 more. And when you say bring in sponsors, you mean I have to go and sell advertising for you? That's oh. not free. I already paid my tax money that pays for your thing. And you want to say it's community. That's not free. Fox Aurora charged $200 um, for the slot, if you can get the slot, and insist you bring in two advertisers as well. I'm on the phone as a telemarketer during the day. Do you think I want to come on, on, get onto the phone when I get home at night and try to sell advertising to people? Mm -hmm. No. That's not community. No. I say shut it all down. Let people live off their own merits because we are showing that we've got what it takes. I'm not trying to be a braggart um, because the proof is there for anyone to see with the figures on YouTube. And the proof is there in the comments. By the way, the comments aren't always good for us, but it's engagement that somebody Fair thought comments. they'll leave one. <laughs> the amount of dislikes is sometimes very, very high, and the amount of bad comments is quite high, but it's engagement. Well, I was going to say, at least it means it's being seen at the very least. Mm. It means somebody uh, was affected by it. If you're watching the TV and you're nodding off, you're not affected by it. <laughs> Unless you're literally just like, if you're struggling to keep your eyes open and you are trying to watch it and you fall asleep anyway, it's like, that could be also exhaustion. <laughs> I think the whole Generally, idea yeah. with, I think the whole idea with change is because um, things go stale. And uh, when I said this is an extinction level event, it is. And it just means, it doesn't mean that there'll be nothing there at the end. It'll mean that new ideas come out and new new things will occur and other things that were dying anyway will just die off quicker. So mm. I can see that there's a positive with um, this whole lockdown with the virus. And I can't... Oh, look, absolutely. Yeah, let the dinosaurs die. It wasn't the end of all life on Earth. Basically, there were five extinction level events in the past and a whole lot of species died, but new species came out. Then the next one came along and a whole lot of them died. When the Nickelodeon first came out, they were very exciting. People going in and putting their nickel in and watching a film. And then later on, when the silent movies came out, and then the talkies, and then colour, there are always people that mourned the death of the um, silent movies, the people that mourned the death of each thing as a new thing began. Actually, it's interesting you should say that because, um, I mean, looking at the photography side of things, one of the things that has made a huge comeback, certainly coming back at the beginning of the year and lo since lockdown, people have dived on it a big time, is analogue film. People are picking up old film cameras now and buying film, and film has made a comeback in a major way compared to digital, purely just for the, 
Yeah, that's because it, it, it is like literally a diff, totally different medium. It requires a totally different discipline and all that sort of stuff to work with it. And yeah, people are going, oh, fuck, I'm locked down there. What can I do? I oh, know, I've got this film camera here. I'll just order a roll of film and bung it in and see what comes out, you know, and people are playing around with this stuff and film's just taking off again sort of thing, whether it's a short... That could be different or- because if you've got this big gap in between, then mm. the new people coming along are applying new minds to it. Things well, do get yeah. formularised without a break. So um, if we'd kept going with silent movies, it just would have gotten very dull because the first people that started with the silent movies had to think for themselves. It was brand new what shots to take. You look at some amazing stuff in the early ones. If it had kept going past 29 to 1935, 1940, it just would have become dull. Usually um, change brings new minds onto things and new ways of doing things. Um, I think we need to embrace change. That's why I don't well, no, care that they're is, pulling down good. a whole bunch of statues. People are going crazy. They're saying, oh, no, they want to pull down ca- a, a statue of Captain Cook. And another person saying, yeah, the history of Captain Cook is terrible. Yes, it is terrible. And they're saying, but it's really history. I'm saying pull down the sta- statue if you want. Put it in a museum, you know, uh, put whatever information with it and put up a new statue. You know, change is necessary. Things start, they develop, evolution. they go stale, they end. I'm hoping that we're going to be malleable enough and still be thinking that uh, we will embrace what the new mediums are, what the new challenges are, and keep on top of it. And I say goodbye to the dinosaurs. When it comes to the local Melbourne indie film industry, most of them have treated me like bloody crap and think they're God. Well, and, bring, uh, bringing it, it home, you're quite right, yes. When it comes down <laughs> to the outlets, most of them wouldn't look at me. America didn't know me, so America just put me on, put our films on their television. And America didn't Way to know go, me. USA. <laughs> America didn't know, know us. And yeah, they we put our films on before <laughs> the main features at places like Roxy 14 and Film Scene. We were on the big screen. Meanwhile, you know, the, locally, I, I would have to struggle just to get my stuff on to um, a, a, a night with 20 people there at a, the local film night. Mm-hmm. So I say, you know... Let the whole fucking lot die. It stinks. It's stale. It's old. It's full of narcissists. It's interesting you should say that, Dave. I mean, I was sort of discussing with a couple of other people the same sort of thing with regards to lockdown and how it's killing the indie industry here in Melbourne and generally the film industry. And there's a whole bunch of them complaining because the government did give, didn't give them a handout, blah, blah, blah. And I sort of well, I pretty much said the same thing, you know, that the industry had, has become such a cesspit of um, narcissism and grandiosity, literally minnows in a tiny pond, you know, um, and behaving like like they're the biggest movie stars on earth. They have no sense of reality. And I was absolutely astounded when I came from my previous careers, you know, being in fire and rescue and the Air Force, etc. You know, we were sort of at this level of professionalism and I come in, you know, decided to take up my passion with film and, and seeing what the film world was actually like, you know, not the imagined thing that we see on TV and Hollywood and stuff. I couldn't believe just how amateur anything could be. You know, it was, it's next level, next level amateur. It is so low. Um, so, I mean, I totally understand what you're saying, Dave. And yeah, I, I'm well, all what for we're it. Saying, what we're saying is there was... You can correct me if I've got this wrong on the model, but the first um, digital film camera that could go for 10 minutes doing HD was a Canon D90? Uh, yes, something along those lines, yeah. I think the battery ran out or something like that, but yeah. But it, it was the first affordable film camera where you could do, um, you know, something for the big screen, HD. That started mm-hmm. a new revolution. Mm. Where... Everything that starts when it's new is quite exciting and brings a whole lot of new people in. And then it starts to settle, then it starts to go stale. We're at the stale end of the Canon D90 revolution. That's why it all sucks at the moment and we can see a lot of 
idiots, right? When the new cycle starts, I hope that we are uh, down to earth and thinking and creative and a part of whatever thing that is new is coming along. I mean, look at Facebook and Twitter. They're 15 years old now. They've actually come and they've oh, wow. hit the crest and over the last four or five years have been putting in so many algorithms, they're on the way down. People are complaining. Mm. Um, there are big companies that want to boycott Facebook. So everything gets its rise and its fall. We're watching the fall of a number of things at the moment and this virus is really an extinction level thing that will kill off some things faster. I say good riddance to them. There will still be activity in the world. New things will still start as they always will be and hopefully we will be there to be something positive in the, and contribute to whatever new comes along because whatever's mm. finishing up fucking well stinks. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's true, true. I agree. Oh, look, I mean, I think whatever comes, you know, the main thing in all of this is the main important thing is story. Um, and I, I think once the decks have been cleared, people you know, with a clear head look, get back to the fundamentals, like good story. The Whatever we go to next, you know, at least story is going to be there and we'll move on and you know, learn from these things and, yeah, fresh start, you know. Um, I'm all for that sort of idea and I'm all for that sort of thinking. So I'm with you on that one, Dave, you know. As long as we keep our minds open to yeah. whatever new is coming along, because people like to like to put. Uh, not a lot of people are early adopters. Only a, a handful are. Are we going to be open-minded enough to be early adopters? Are we going to be uh, cluey enough to realise that's the new thing to adopt? Fingers what? crossed. Well, look, I mean, Australia's always been about five years behind the rest of the world when it comes to fresh ideas. Um, and that's be it music or whatever. It's very rare for us to be at the cutting edge. So, you know, an opportunity is here now that everyone's in the same boat. So, you know, wherever we are, be in the US or Europe or here in Australia, there's a chance for us all to start at the same time with a fresh idea, a fresh take, a fresh start. Um, We're already in the right place. Uh, think of it this way. Aaron's show isn't an Aussie show. Oh, where are you from, Aaron? I'm from New York. Ah, right. Yeah. Oh, oh, so you're in the States. I, not yeah. Not, <laughs> not, not the city, though. I'm from Albany, New York. It's about four away, four hours away from New York City. So I know when I, usually when I say I'm from New York, everybody thinks New York City. But no, it's not New York City. Just to throw it out there. It's, oh, okay. In New York, yeah. But yeah, that's, that's one thing I do love about this platform is <clears throat> I give other horror fans like myself, but that are also in the indie scene or whatever the case may be, a voice to talk about their projects and other stuff going on, as well as just meeting people around, like literally from my own home, my own attic, meeting people all around the world, which is just crazy. You nev I never thought that this would happen with this podcast. Like Originally, I started this show. It was just me and some friends and family members, just like my cousins and stuff. Just, you know, recording, talking, reviewing horror movies and just talking about horror. And I went from that to, you know, slowly progressing to what it is now to where talking to you guys and you're in a whole different, you're in Australia, right? Yep. Yeah. Uh, hang on, let me check. <laughs> but I will, bet you, I will bet you dollars to donuts <laughs> that there will be, I will bet you that there will be people in the United States, whether they're in, um, uh, one city in tech, um, one city in this state, or a city in that state, that will say that stuff they just said about the local Melbourne scene. That's the way our little scene works in Dallas. Mm -hmm. Boy, we've got the same problems. Because in chatting with different people from England and America, um, the people that I work with uh, quite a lot, they keep telling me the same stuff that I'm seeing here that irritates me is the same way it's working where they are. Yep. Huh. Their scenes have gone stale. They've got their uh, local heroes. They've got their old boys clubs. And they've got their government-funded shit that uh, cuts them out too. Mm-hmm. You're damn right okay. about <laughs> Oh, well, there we go. Online Bring on the revolution. Bring on the revolution <laughs> together. That we're all like going to conquer. <laughs> well, I think we already are. 
we're already doing something that is pretty big because podcasts are just taking off now during this uh, lockdown. They talk about podcasts taking off four years ago like we've missed the start of it. Visual podcasts are starting to take off now. That's an interesting thing. How are you supposed to listen to a visual podcast while you're driving? Well, okay. With I know with my show, for example, like I do, put, I put it out on YouTube, but I also put it out like my mm-hmm. show goes on iTunes, Google Play, and all those audio platforms. So I, I put out audio yep. and video. I'm sure I most of them do, not all, because there's some that just are strictly video, and there's some that are just strictly audio. But for the most part, a lot of the ones that are video are both. So it's just like you can hear it. Mm-hmm. I'm I'm the same way. Like when I was when I was going to going to work, I work in a state. I work in an office building, so I'd listen. I'd be listening to podcasts all freaking day, including my own. So I listen. I'd listen to podcasts all day, and then now that I'm home, the quite the funny thing is I have all the time in the world to listen to them. I don't listen to them as much. I do it here <laughs> and there, like if I'm doing chores around the house or something. And I think yep. it's because of the simple fact that I'm just home. I'm not like out in the like if I go out driving somewhere. <clears throat> I'll listen to a podcast from driving alone or something yep, like that. Yep. I mean, once I start, I'm, I'm going to be working from home in the next few weeks. So I'm either going to be listening to podcasts while I'm working, or if I have a show coming up and I have to review a movie, I'll be watching like horror movies throughout the day to get myself ready for my passion. <clears throat> but yep. it's, it's, it's crazy. It's crazy. It's, it's crazy that we're still on this thing since March. And it's crazy that it's the whole world. It's not <clears throat> just, just the U.S. thing, or just thing in Australia? It's, it's globally, yeah, yeah. It's oh, yeah. look, you know, and it's look, we 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 can't do any international travel from Australia anyway till middle of next year. So we know it's going to go for at least a year. Yeah. Um, and look, the second wave, it's sort of hitting Melbourne at the moment, but there's going to be a second wave globally as well. And you know, it's um. I mean, the downside of all this is we aren't getting any zombies. We're just lots, lots of deaths yeah. and, and sickness. No, I know no bloody I zombies. Zombies! I'm so disappointed that the zombie apocalypse doesn't have <laughs> I think you yeah. would feel differently if um, the cinema experience had have gone the way they expected when Polyester came out. They they were already talking about surround sound. Polyester was to bring in smellovision. You oh, know wow. what dead bodies oh. smell like? Yep. No. <laughs> if you're watching um, a zombie movie in the cinema and the smell of dead <laughs> bodies started going through the place, oh. you know, I mean, most zombie movies don't make sense because a zombie can't sneak up on you. You go, poor, what's that smell? Well, because they're, so, they're supposed to smell you, but that makes sense now. You can but smell I hear that all. I hear that the uh, smell of burning flesh actually smells like bacon. <laughs> well, I know oh, what yes. um, dead bodies <laughs> smell like. Because bacon tends to activate. Bacon. I once oh, brought gosh. home a coffin from the um, funeral parlor. Um, oh, wow. basic, well, the coffin was going to be thrown out, right? The, the Jewish way of burying is that you have to be in a thin wooden box because you come from dust, you go to dust. And they make a big fuss saying even the richest person uh, ends up in a grave like the uh, poorest. And this body came in from Italy and it was in one of the most ornate coffins out and it had been welded shut. And the guys at the funeral parlour had spent all day opening up this coffin, right? Well... Basically, I thought this thing would look great as a phone booth in my place. It had this. <laughs> well, I, I got the coffin as you do. home. <laughs> I, I got the coffin home, but the smell of the dead body started coming out of it. Oh, no. Basically, oh, the stink of a dead body is so bad and trying to get rid of it is near impossible. Did you just make soda and bleach it? No, I moved. <laughs> 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 oh, gosh. <laughs> if you get dead um, stink into... To, well, my dad used to um, sell cars, used cars once, and he was going to sell me a car, and he said it's a pickup, and we call what the Americans call pickups, utes here. 
a pickup here was the uh, hearse that picks up the dead bodies. Oh, oh no. <laughs> Doesn't matter what they do. They can't get rid of the stink. They can pull them apart. They can do everything. Basically, they're useless. Mm. I, I didn't take the car, <laughs> mainly because yeah, I didn't have a license. No. But, yeah, uh, <laughs> well, those things used to get, uh, when they say they pick up a dead body, I mean, basically, they pick up whatever is passes for a dead body. I mean, it could be just chunks, you know, from a murder scene. Okay. Yeah, the stuff <laughs> sloshes around in the back. Actually, I should have thought twice before I took that coffin because I did have to tip the juice out. Oh! <laughs> Ew. <laughs> I just wasn't it off the garden. Oh, there was, no, there was a whole lot of um, watery red juice in the bottom. Yum. Let me see if took that for quite on the middle of the night. Tell you what, we've been at this about two and a half hours. Do we need oh, to do? Do we need to do something to tighten it up to wrap it up? So that you can. How about we talk about what we eat when we watch movies to finally answer Aaron's <laughs> oh, question? Let's yeah, make Aaron's <laughs> question about what we eat in the cinema. I've already answered that one. So who else is going to talk about food? Well, it really depends what I'm watching. Like, I mean, I had this thing where um, I had a bit of a running gag where um, every time me and my best friend watched um, *I Zombie*, I would get something like really spicy. <laughs> God, nobody mentioned choc tops. That's because they melt too fast and you have to eat them really, really quickly. Yeah, it's gone before the commercials are over. I had, I had, I had, I had one. There are certain... Yeah, but there's but certain like foods that they food. mainly I sell at the like, cinema and hardly anywhere else. I'll, I'll and that's what choc tops are. Popcorn, <laughs> choc tops, jaffers. They probably don't have jaffers, jaffers in the USA. Oh, jaffers are so good, though. What is oh, that? they are good. So jaffers are like choc... Chocolate and orange. orange in like a, hmm? yeah, it's a orange, orange chocolate on the inside and have and like orange. orange flavored, like almost like M M&M and M type shell on the. Because I think because in New Zealand yeah, jaffers are different again, <laughs> so it's like are they? I think so. Like cha- cha- jaffers are just like chocolate and orange together, so it's like uh, chocolate on the outside, like orange on the inside. Maybe I can't remember the last time I had a jaffa, but. Yeah, uh, Jaffers are orange on the outside and chocolate on the inside. They've got like a little shell, like a Smartie or an M&M, so for it's like a... But the size ball. of marbles. And yeah, you yeah, roll yeah. them down the aisles and they go, <laughs> bang, clunk, 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 clunk. Oh, no. Who's rolling those Jaffers, Jaffers get? like Dave gets lots of candy that you can roll down the aisle. <laughs> well, that's what Maltesers are. They're candy you can roll down the aisle. You can say Nowadays, that David goes to the candy shop as the candy man. <laughs> now they get too fussy at the cinemas nowadays You're not allowed to uh, muck around or anything You get thrown out and they threaten to ca- call the cops But when, when I was a kid You could be a bit of a yahoo And you'd just um, get a clip behind the ear And that was it Nowadays you've got to worry about all sorts of other things So you can't roll Jaffers down Depends the aisle Depends where you go Depends where you, you go, roll though. them down the aisle, somebody's going to tell you, oh, it's a hazard and you could get sued and somebody's going to put you on Facebook saying you tried to kill the whole cinema by making them all slip down the aisle. Or feed someone that dirty Jaffa because <laughs> <laughs> it's been rolling around on the carpet. And some kid eats by mistake and it's like, well, that's a lot of kid <laughs> I don't know, sometimes the cinemas, so they don't clean them as often as they should. You sort of have to wade knee deep through all the um, stale popcorn before you can get to your seat and stuff. So how are you going to roll a jaffa down through that? Exactly. Well, it's better than the other <laughs> things they used to do. Do you remember the popcorn tubs, right, and people would put a hole in the bottom of one? No. Uh, yeah. No. Yeah. 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 But I know, what you, I know what's going to come next. Yeah, this is like when you're adolescent and you're with your girlfriend and you want to get a handy in the cinema. I didn't make this shit up. The Skyhook <laughs> sung about it. What? Do you remember? Yes. Well, Do you remember I mean, the Skyhooks? I hear all these things. <laughs> the Sky, back in 75, the Skyhooks put out a song about it. Slip into a cinema and give yourself a treat. Better to take a raincoat. Might be sticky on the seat. It was about That's opening true. up the... <laughs> Yeah, you open up your twisties bag at the bottom. 
And if your mother knew what you, if your mother knew yeah. what you were doing, she'd probably hang her head and cry. If she knew that you were whipping the dripping, <laughs> I mean, those are the words of the song. But the um, the song is about dirty adolescents getting a hand job from their girlfriends in the um, in the cinema, opening up the bottom of the popcorn, <laughs> putting it on the lap. Yep. Back in the days when going to a movie was a bit cheaper, so you, you weren't wasting, you know, whatever, however many dollars is now to go to the movies. Oh, yeah. It's like seven bucks for a, a thing of popcorn, and it's like 20 cents to make. But cinemas have been making most of their money from food. They only get something like 15% uh, profit on the tickets. Mm. It's like 60% profit on the food. And a beer is $8. Yeah, overpriced. So, oh, Yeah. Uh, cinemas make their money from that. Well, my mum is she does she doesn't really like the candy bar, the, so she basically brings food to the cinema. Like, You're not she allowed brings, to, like, but you sneak on. it. Yeah, yeah. yeah you gotta sneak yeah. it. <laughs> like full on, like bread and cheese and like a like a like yeah. a breadstick, my like, cheese and it's like it's like it just it's great because like you can have fruit, you can have. Like a sandwich that you can make together. Sun dried tomatoes and olives and Exactly, like literally <laughs> and different cheeses and, and some dip. <laughs> I, have this, <laughs> I have this I have this for a one and a half hour movie. No. Well, you know, she she goes there for the time, not for the fact that there are gonna be crumbs on the floor. I can imagine doing that from the dust till dawn thing at the uh, drive in. Although at the mm. drive ins we used to like they always had the snack bar at the drive-ins and so you could go and buy hamburgers, hot dogs and chips and, and uh, we didn't have a lot of fast food places anywhere so that was pretty special when I was a kid. Yeah, and I find if I'm watching a movie, if I forget to eat, that's probably a good indication of how absorbed I am. So, like, well, there you go. It's, it's the Malteser thing. We, we I should have the drive in. Before this whole thing gets um, edited, I don't want anyone to think that I actually took twisties or popcorn to the cinema to get a hand job. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> well, there's no shame in admitting you did go to the cinema to get a hand job, though. I mean, it's you know, we've all been there at some point, haven't we? I, I have not. Okay. <laughs> no, I haven't. So I can I can understand the circumstances. Dark. You know, everyone's focused on the film. No one's going to notice if someone starts making noises that aren't part of the soundtrack. <laughs> yeah, you, you, have, you have that little bucket list and you just, okay, I've done that. Yeah. I've never done it. I, I seriously what? haven't. I just brought it up because it was a common thing and it was in the sky. <laughs> I don't think it's that common. I don't know if they did it in America. PC. What if I've just given a whole lot of Americans an, an idea that they've never <laughs> done that before and suddenly we're reading about it in the papers and I'm guilty of having done that? <laughs> Dave, you've st Dave, you've started a movement, man. This is going to be the big thing. Gonna, we're going to see baby. all the news in a couple of months' time. There's going to be all these baby. people in the US. They're going to be bonking each other. They're going to be saying, time. come on, baby, butter my popcorn. <laughs> And as I was saying, a lot of my friends are very, very eager to go back to the cinemas because there was that, <laughs> I mean, there was social interaction in being able to watch a movie in the cinemas that you wouldn't necessarily get at home. And in this lockdown situation, of course, everybody is kind of like, you know, hankering for a bit of that social human contact interaction. Yes. You know, the popcorn so things sure, that they... I'm sure that as soon as those restrictions are lifted, that, like, yeah, plenty of people will just want to be going to the cinemas to just... It's a night out. Yeah, spend I mean, some time with some actual humans, you know, with some so actual friends and family and, like, you know, boyfriends So what you're saying is this, and, the cinema is yeah. going to be the start of the baby boom, another baby <laughs> boom from the cinema. Don't get a, not, not if everybody buys popcorn. <laughs> <laughs> now, Aaron, did they actually do that in the USA with the popcorn, or is that just an Aussie thing? I think that's everywhere. <laughs> oh, thank God. <laughs> I was starting to feel a bit weird for a minute, but now that I realise that every, other people do it too, not that's that I ever did it, but other people did it. But people, other people that are overseas, other people also do it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yep. <laughs> 
<laughs> I had, I did. We're not do expanding a, on this. <laughs> Clearly, I actually did it in a film clip. The the guys rigged up this popcorn thing with a hole in the bottom, and they, there was a jigger so that it looked like the popcorn's going up and down. And then when it, they cut and they came back, they had a hair dryer, and I had to press the hair dryer and go. Whoa! And the whole thing flies out everywhere. So people have been associating me with popcorn and that. But it was, in, uh, it was a music okay. video I did. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'll get you the link for it one day. But, um, yeah, the, these guys did that music video and thought that it's funny to have somebody jerking off in the cinema. <laughs> wow. That explains the sticky carpet then. Okay. Oh, oh, ew. <laughs> I never thought of that. <laughs> oh, boy. Hmm. I'm, I'm very slightly OCD, so, like, this whole lockdown with, like, you know, everyone having to use hand sanitizer has been bliss for me. I was <laughs> just like, yes, use more hand sanitizer. Wash your hands. That's lovely. That's wonderful. I, w I was wondering why people were doing that already. <laughs> I know. You see, it's like... Oh, like, why wasn't that it's, normal to me? <laughs> it is. It's like when I went to the cinema with Vixie, when I went to the cinema with Vixie, she got Pikachu painted onto her hand. Do you remember? Yes. And you, you were the fussiest person there. Every little kid that got Pikachu got Pikachu. You it was like, no, no, no. You got to put a little bit of white in the eyes. No, you got the hat <laughs> wrong. And. and uh, <laughs> I After all imagine. of this has gone down and it's taken forever for her to get her Pikachu tattoo, she says, I'm just going to the toilet. She comes back and she's washed it and smudged it. <laughs> See, this is why well, if I get any painting or a henna, not on my hands because I wash them too often. <laughs> That's a, that, is a, that is a trick for you, Pixie. You're not to get anything on your hands because you know you don't wash them. Well, that's, that's You've got to be I careful. Have I, have, I have gloves. I know, but if you want something to last and look pretty, so you can be like, ha oh my god, it's not on your hands. So you yeah, don't if, ruin it. If you get it hands. on your face, <laughs> if, you get, if you get the henna on your face and it's all patterns, how do you know that they're not writing in Hindi, uh, I fuck lizards or, <laughs> you know, something really nasty? Well, I mean, to be fair, I got, I got the, it, 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 was, it was actually on the back of my lecture in parental duties. Um, it was just a flower pattern because I went to an I went to um, it wasn't Holly. It was like the Festival of Lights. That I've got. Which oh, was I didn't kind of notice that on parental duties. Um, no. What I'll tell you what happened on parental duties that um, you'll remember, yeah. Cookie. Do you remember that um, uh, most people didn't rock up to the set because we had flash flooding and a sudden storm. Yeah, we did. Yeah, that's right. We did too. Yeah, that's why yeah, that I didn't notice it. <laughs> We're on our way to a set that was actually all ready for the film, and the shot list had been done, everything, and we knew yeah. that there was going to be some rain. But in came a flash rained. flood. Oh yeah, and we could see that the water on the cars was above the hubcaps. And it was like, <clears throat> I don't know if we're going to be able to shoot. And at last minute, Gerardo said, I have a place we can go. And it wasn't even this fantastic set. It was just, um, it was just under shelter. And we actually made a Willing little video. It was on the dock, it was wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. We made a little video of showing how we set up the set at last minute. So because we were on the back foot with everything and it's like uh, this extra didn't turn up and that person didn't turn up, nobody would ever know the problems that went in before that film. That's why I didn't notice anything. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm freezing. It's uh, poured down with rain. We're just thinking of everything at last minute. Um, and that's considered one of the best movies we've ever done. We originally had this place um, that was um, a destroyed um, small building of about four rooms where you could go through the rooms and just mm -hmm. everything, every shot was already worked out in the lot. And suddenly we've got, yeah, you've got a wall. <laughs> what are we going to do? Is. And do you remember there's a fella that comes along while we're shooting saying, can I have my rubbish back? Yes, it's the dude with the cross, and it's like, ah. Uh, yeah, that's right. There was too. 
need to give it all back and it's like, oh, do we nearly finish? Can we finish <laughs> the shoot and then give you your rubbish because we emptied rubbish bins and stuff. Didn't know oh, that there was, yeah, that's right, yeah. there was some 90 year old cleaner, you know, that wanted his rubbish back so he could throw it out. He was collecting it, I think. Oh, no, it had already been collected and was had been in the bins. We oh, came and we gosh. tipped the bins out to make a set. So we couldn't go between the four buildings. We were actually stuck in this one little spot, making shit up on the spot to uh, to continue on and, and film it. <laughs> and yet that one's actually gotten into film festivals and done very well. You did uh, all right, actually, that, yeah. That's why I didn't notice any henna on the back of your neck because... Um, well, also, just my, on... my hair was down as well in a plait, so I like it was covered because I only noticed it when I watched it. I'm like, oh, that's nice Easter egg in case people are wondering why she why she seems to be able to go outside because maybe she's got the alien henna on her. <laughs> alien markings on her, so she's, that's why she's able to go outside. That's why they survive. Oh, tell you what, we should probably wrap this up because we've been here three hours and Aaron's actually got to go through all of the footage to edit oh. it down <laughs> and cut it. I was going to suggest he should go and get a cup of coffee because it's morning over there and we're yeah. sort of rocking into the yeah. night. I reckon we, uh, we can go for uh, another uh, hour at least, I think. Yeah, we're just waffling <laughs> on. Morning uh, we, <laughs> what, do we need to, what do we need to give you, Aaron, so that it can all join together and make sense when you edit us down? Honestly, um... Well, that's what, what I'll do is when, after we close out, I'll, just, I'll let you guys know after we close the show out and I hit stop. Let's do it in the opposite order. Vixie, Anastasia, Cookie, and then me. Yeah, everybody. Yeah, we'll do that, yeah. Sorry, what do you need? Anything you want to close with, feel free to go right ahead. Oh, okay. Um, well, thank you for having us. Thank you very much. Um, it was an absolute pleasure coming in and talking on your podcast today. It's been an absolute, yeah, it was so fun. It's always so fun. Okay. And I'm glad we got to talk about, oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> talk about everything and everyone, and we preached so many good topics. So I think it's going to be an interesting podcast. Live long and prosper. <laughs> okay. Uh, USA, thank you. We've come live to you before your naked steaming eyes. I hope this has been a romantic experience for you. I've loved it. And I hope to talk to you again soon. And thank you, Aaron, for having us on. It's been amazing. And, of course, Dave, well, it's your fault that we're here, so <laughs> legend effort. <laughs> Well, I'm going to echo the uh, positive sentiments of Vixie, Anastasia and Cookie and thank you for having us on the show, Aaron. Uh, I do hope that you edit out all of that buttered popcorn talk because it really, <laughs> it, it was horrific but not in the horror sort of way. And uh, thank you, USA. And if that stuff's not edited out, please forgive me. I'm just an Aussie. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> well, at least we didn't um, say anything like, God, I'm a dry as a dead dingo's donger. <laughs> but um, if you are, uh, did enjoy our Aussie humour and, uh, of course, well, if you're listening to this podcast, we uh, think that, of course, you'd be interested in horror movies. We do have one coming out called Badass Bunyip. We oh, do. Yeah. Yeah, got to yes. wait. We actually have to wait until the lockdowns are over because Anastasia's now got the lead role. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we're we're people actually get to see my penis on screen. What? Yes. <laughs> I have a wee. Oh. Yeah. It's the fake one that squirts wee wee. Oh, right. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, we we were about to do that last three days worth of shooting. Um, it, it was planned for April over the um, Easter break, and mm. one week before that, we went into lockdown. <laughs> that was the one week I had off <laughs> before I went yeah. back to uni as well. <laughs> so, yeah, we do have a feature film coming out, but uh, anyway, I, we've just sort of destroyed the um, 
to saying goodbye. I just wanted to make sure that all of the popcorn stuff isn't in there because it's absolutely filthy and rude and people shouldn't oh. talk about that stuff. And everyone is, in the is USA it. is going to think we're weird. I mean, we are called the land down under, but we're not obsessed with what's down under. And, and now everyone's going to think of you when they buy popcorn. <laughs> But also, it is kind of fun if you want to try it. You know, if you turn the maps the other way around, we're actually the land up over. Turn the map upside down? Yeah. <laughs> that means the map of Tassie is up. Yeah. If down is up and up is down, and, like, you're playing a... Flex. It's like a little hat. <laughs> you have it the other way, and before the days of um, Brazilians and shaving, they used to say the map of Tasmania looked like... Um, anyway, we're, we're supposed to be wrapping up. Dave, Dave this is called doing an encore, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> no, we're wrapping up. We'll have to do this again, though. I, did, I had a great time with all four of you. Oh, thank and you very much. We had a wonderful time with you. Thanks. Thank you all for coming on. And I like how... I like how you guys stole the show in a sense of just like you, none of you were shy, especially David again. <laughs> <laughs> but like it was never like a like dead silence, which is always amazing. So thank you for that. Everybody go follow them. I will be getting the links for from them and I'll be posting them when the episode comes out. As cool. far as I go, you should my listeners should know where to follow me, but here's a reminder just in case you don't. Horror with, horror with Sir Sturdy on Facebook. I have a Facebook group. That's where you can share anything and everything horror-related, including your own projects. Again, it's, as long as it's horror-related, it's cool. I have a Facebook page with the same name, Horror with Sir Sturdy. That's where I share all my podcast stuff, all my videos I do. Anything horror-related that I do that I'm involved in myself, I share it on there. I have a Horror with Sir Sturdy YouTube channel, which you can see, again, all my videos, including the podcast videos where this will be up. And then anywhere you can listen to podcasts, iTunes, Google Play, Podbean, Spotify, and every other smaller thing, you can hear my voice on there. I do stream every now and then on Twitch, horror underscore with underscore sir underscore sturdy. And if you ever want to be a guest on the show, shoot me an email, horror with sir dot sturdy. Again, that's horror with sir dot sturdy at gmail.com. Again, thank you all for listening. Thank you all for the support. And as always, I'll see you in your. Ha, 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 ha.